Particles of sand floating across the dunes. A distance that can only be crossed with a combination of determination and stupidity. For those that wander the wastes outside of the larger civilizations, this area, particularly of the countryside, spells only one thing. Death and flamelessness. Mixed in the sand in an even measure is a cocktail of ashes of what the world once was. And yet, growing throughout all of it, are segments of plant life, resilient segments of still living things that manage to thrive in an environment like this. A hand disrupts the mountaintop, pulling itself over. Up. The man pulls himself up, attaches a climbing rope, and slides it down. You hear a call on the other side as the man fastens it to his belt and slowly climbs up the side of the cliff face behind his brother. Pulling himself up and over, he places himself on the mountaintop and looks over at the spreading wasteland around. The path that the last of them took through here, well, it didn't leave much. Not for the people of this world. And not for the heroes that are still out there fighting. Cities used to adorn this valley, but now all that's left is the dusty dunes. Just the same. Luke brushes the hair out of his eyes, pulls out his binoculars, and stares down. With any luck, with any luck, there'll still be people down there. So, we gotta find them. Come on. Cole runs up ahead of his brother as Luke takes the binoculars down from his face, sighs, adjusts them, places them on his back, and continues walking. He makes his way to the edge of the cliff and lightly hops, flame flickering around him, easing the descent. This was his life. This was a life that only he could live. A life that only one brave or stupid enough was willing to partake in. Some time ago, The queen sits in her throne. It had been a tumultuous few weeks, a rare thing in the derelict. After all, most recently, there had been a disruption in not only the coda, the court of death had manifested physically on the world, and the hunter of mortals was struck down. The situation at least, deserved some amount of examination. The idea that they were currently workshopping, though, it seemed odd, specifically coming from the person it was. She rattles her fingers across the side of the throne. I'm not inherently opposed to this decision. Just call me curious. At the very least... Theo's efforts in aiding those that live on the surface will met no small amount of punishment. I have already been... My services have been requested on that front. And yet, I didn't think you of all people would support this decision to see her removed. Venter's arms fold. 
He stands there, looking over his shoulder at a new pyromancer, placed in their presence by, well, long-fought effort, even greater schemes. He shakes his head. My feelings on the matter are complex enough to consider them a knot we lack the time and grace to unpack. I know what I want on the surface level, and I'm going to move towards it regardless. I have a responsibility to not only everyone here in the derelict, I have a responsibility to... Um, your... your daughter. The queen leans in a little bit. I understand. Okay, um... In that case, she looks past him. This new pyromancer. I picked him myself. The Golden Knight walks forward. It's... It's a pleasure to, um... Make your, uh... Acquaintance! His words almost die in his throat to some extent. Hmm. She looks back over at Venter. Is this the one that you were keeping in the Court of Death for quite some time? It... E yes. Am I supposed to act surprised that he's here? I would appreciate it. Yes. Okay, consider this a rehearsal then. The queen relaxes in her throne. All right. Why this guy? She looks over at Venter, her body language sort of fading. I believe there is a core quality that the Pyromancer of Instrumentality needs to possess. It is, um... At its core, they need to... They need to love what they study. The Queen sort of tilts her head up. Makes the job a little bit harder, all things considered. You're destroying what you study. Couldn't contempt be an equivalently effective method of conveyance? Venter looks back over at the Pyromancer. I think that that would be cruel to the records we take. We need to record events, stories, literature, movies. We need to record them with um, compassion. It's uh, something that I lack to some extent. Um, this man, however, um, he tries to, he struggles for the exact word for this individual, and he settles instead on a phrase. He doesn't know where it comes from exactly. Feels right as far as the Golden Knight's concerned. This is a person capable of loving the world enough that it breaks his heart. <laughs> hmm. The queen looks over at the pyromancer and then shrugs. I'll need to take your word for it. Not exactly something that I have experience with myself. So, I'll be relying on your recommendation. Again, consider this a rehearsal. She scrunches her form up and pulls herself into a more proper posture. Adjust yourself to the uh, to your responsibilities. Get to know the people around the derelict, and we will have a proper debut of you when the time comes. For now, I was curious exactly where your medal came from. I guess I have my answer. You're dismissed. The GK blinks, looks back and forth, looks over at Venter. Venter nods, and he nervously walks away. <laughs> Disappearing into the pipeworks. You want your daughter to be free, don't you? She tilts her uh, head slightly, a little slyly. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. Want, maybe. I don't know what freedom looks like, not for people like us. I just want her to suffer a little bit less. If somebody else could shoulder the burden, a burden that's clearly destroying her, 
I'd be happy to take it. Plus, this is a man that chose to be here. She was created for this life. It's different. Something he picked of his own volition after being hurt one too many times. Makes him no different than the rest of us, right? The queen smiles. Ah. <sighs> uh, you were about to say present company excluded, of course. She sort of leans in, arms folding. You don't want two monsters floating around the derelict like me, right? Not my words. Make of it as you will. If I could spare Theo of this, I will. He straightens his back, bows, and moves towards the door to introduce the new pyromancer to the derelict at large. The queen remains seated and allows the flames to dance around her fingers, spreading sweet gossip of exactly what was happening with Vinter and the Golden Knight beyond. Oh, so that's how they got on, huh? Vinter's in worse shape than I thought. <laughs> A man lies on his back. Facing straight upwards at the sky. The ocean is uncharacteristically lapping around him. And as it does, he realizes he's never seen the sea in his long years move like this. In the distance, a large tree towers over the environment, sending coursing waves through well, the dusty dunes surrounding the area. And with it, the ocean itself seems to rile and begin to move again. This eternally stagnant world seems to move, picks itself up again, and it starts to shift. Even if it's through the fires of war, Life has returned to this place. He touches the side of his armor, cracked by Venter's blow. Flame leaks out from it as he exhales, fire shifting out from, uh, out from beneath the mask, having acquired his body recently. Hang is significantly heavier in the muck. And as he does, a figure towers over him, blotting out the sun and driving it into a deeper night. However, this isn't where, go where we're going to pick up this story. The story that's currently being told isn't about the current pyromancer of instrumentality. It's about the previous one. Tiny Jackson and Roma. <laughs> yes. Hello? Okay. Let me... You. Doink. <clears throat> you two find yourselves face to face with an uninjured Isaac and a satyr that is uh, bleeding from the top of his head and one of his arms and his shoulders seem to be dis distorted, bent backwards. He's smiling just the same, but you can tell that this man is in miserable shape. Allow me to wound him briefly. Let me hit this button. Doink. Uh, doink. There you go. <clears throat> he, he sort of stands up and like looks over at you, Argos, and offers you a smile through all of the blood. Good to see Argos. <laughs> Hi, Seder, you're looking out of jail, smiley. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no. 
Hey, good I to see know. you too. I clap an arm around him <laughs> and like <laughs> use single hand <laughs> savior as a healing <laughs> knife to just start <laughs> dabbing you him just, back to life in the background. You side shake him <laughs> repeatedly. Hold on, and uh, let me uh, just swap up this. Uh, no, that's not insidious enough. Uh, let's grab a, let's grab a Times Derelict theme. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> you managed to get a Seder back up a little bit. Argos, do me a favor, roll to die, and then roll to do. Let me show bars. The man is at... Okay, you shank him, and you watch as <laughs> that health bar just ticks up a little bit as shank, 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 you stab him in the side, and uh, I mark him with a good old classic. Isaac uh, sort of like looks between each of you and is like, so, might be getting ahead of myself a little bit, but you probably after Mike, you ran ahead to the throne room, right? Could be. He thinks, hmm, that's a shame because I actually got to stop you guys here. Do you? Mike looks over. Those eyes seem, how do I describe them? They feel simultaneously piercing, but utterly blunted by the years. It's like, uh, it's like an eagle staring at you, but the eagle's high as hell. Um, it's an interesting sensation to feel watched by this man. He, he nods. At least currently, it's my best bet to get what I want. I mean, that's what you guys are doing too, right? It's not like I fault you for it or anything. He says, like looking at everyone here, Fia fidgets in place. And from the, down the stairway, thunk, 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 Willow in trouble. You guys managed to catch up. Ah, oh, jeez, this is getting worse by the second. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are we interrupting something? Yeah, sorry, I'm doing my no getting past me speech. You look over at Seder Trouble. Uh, he's uh, Argos is shanking him quietly to the side. Uh, Argos, roll to do for me again. Uh, you watch as Argos is taking a quiet medical care of him while distracting Isaac. this, <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I will not make it clear. Because you can tell that if you weren't, she would. And she's like, okay. <laughs> you, continue, you continue medically shanking Seder as uh, Isaac, like, um, ooh. Okay, so Trouble, you arrive. You look at the situation here. You look at Theo, and yeah, you Treble, see... Treble sees Theo and makes a direct eye contact with her. You see from Theo almost a like the space around her feels distorted to your listening ability. The song of her heart is literally raging right now due to uh an obvious incident relating to the death of her father. Um, <laughs> and uh, she looks back over at you, makes direct eye contact, seems to pick up on something, pauses, gets a more difficult expression, and then Argos, you feel Theo's determination almost adjust or change. Um, she felt like she was shaky up to this point. But, uh, now, via your connection to her, you feel almost something boiling up in her chest. Is Theo angry? <laughs> Theo looks back over at Isaac and, um, is like, So, uh, how are we gonna do this? You guys can all jump me in once, come one on one. Doesn't really make too much of a difference to me. <laughs> So we're definitely fighting them. There's no talking our way out of this one. Mm. Sort of pauses. Uh, I guess when it comes down to it, 
I... He, like, looks back over his shoulder. You guys seem plenty good. You seem plenty competent and everything. In fact, if you took down Venter... Ah, sorry. He's just, like, looking over to Theo. Theo's feathers bristle! Uh... I think you even have a fair shot at this, but... For me? My case? Uh... I think I believe in the queen just a little bit more. He, like, turns and looks like... It's not like a loyalty thing or anything. Uh, he, like, sort of, uh... <laughs> pauses himself there and, like, shrugs. Listen, you guys are here to, like... You guys are here to bail yourselves out. You're here to stop the execution. Like, good job. You got Seder out and everything. Straight up, why don't you just go home? <laughs> Wait, you're trying to diplomatize us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't... Kind of, kind of <laughs> Listen, we don't have to necessarily fight. It seems like you accomplished your objective. I can continue on with mine. What is your objective? Me, sort of like... Hmm. Shit. Ah, oh, this is hard. He, like, hangs his head for a second. Man, where's it explaining this stuff than the queen is? Uh... Huh. Hmm, he taps his foot a few times. Okay, yeah, no. Maybe, maybe if I say, you'll leave me alone. <laughs> he, uh, Who knows? He, like, maybe we will. <laughs> he, he, like, <laughs> nods to himself. He's, like, uh, extremely straightforwardly. Uh, my long-term goal is to ass assist the queen with hers. Um, his eyes sort of shift back and forth. And he almost looks over his shoulder for a second, and you hear a confirmation. He's not listening now? Okay, good. Um, he stares straight ahead at each of you. Long term? Uh, well, I guess I could start with Eternity's goal. He, um, he sort of sighs. You're a member of Exilansis. You should be pretty familiar with it. I'm pretty familiar, yes. Well, sort of like this. Uh, you shank Seder again. <laughs> Give me a roll to do. <laughs> All we gotta do is keep him talking long yeah. enough. And yeah, either yeah. stop, or Seder will be fully healed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Eternity is eventually planning on using some sort of grand sacrifice of not only the flame here, but also all you guys up in Exulansis to create his own world free of all the plague and disease he sees in this one. Mm. Yes, I'm aware of this. Functionally, we're all just... We're all just components in this tool he needs to create his new world. I mean, some of us a little bit more literally than others. Yeah. Well... I mean, as much as you guys are workers, we are quite literally components he's going to use to cast a spell. <laughs> Yeah, kindling for the fire is the comparison I'd make. Um, he like looks over at uh, uh, you all, and then looks over at Fia. Listen, if you leave the queen alone for long enough, she's actually promised us vengeance on that guy. And like, I like your odds; they're pretty good. So if I lose again, no hard feelings. If you push past me and manage to actually take out Eternity, good job. You accomplished the job for me. Still bet on her more than I'd bet on you. He, like, mm -hmm. looks over at the flame billowing through the uh, derelict. Queen's a clever lady. It's just biding her time for a chance to snap the guy's neck. <laughs> Trouble, Trouble sort of looks over at Theo to get Theo's read on, on this, like, her opinion. Theo's bristling. <laughs> Theo is still bristling. How long has she been waiting? Huh. 
Ah, uh, from the very start. Yeah, he says with a big smile. Imagine, based on what I've seen. She's been waiting a very long time. How do you like the odds of the queen and us together? His mouth sort of opens. Theo's feathers continue to, like, shake a little bit. You get the... She is expanding to her full size, which admittedly is still incredibly thin, but she's fully peacocked out back here. He, uh, is like, if I could see a way to make that happen, maybe I'd go for it. Yeah. It's because you're conveniently leaving out the most important part. <laughs> Theo says, speaking up. She actually moves over next to Argos. The queen's plan isn't as simple as appearing behind eternity and snapping his neck. You know that device we gave... She, like, looks over at Argos meaningfully for a second, as if to fill in. That device we gave to Mike. Don't say Mike! Isaac is right in front of us! <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a weapon to point all of the derelict's flame towards one location. But the Queen's planning... It's what she's always been planning. To use all of the flames stored here, not to create a new world but to burn eternity forever. To hurt him in a way that he will never recover. To allow all of the souls here to take their own piece of vengeance from the man. Doing so is a sacrifice of not only her life, but the life of the one who pulls the trigger. It's... Tufio sort of speaks up. It's not a solution that I like anymore. It also sounds like it would be condemning all of the souls in the flame to being the walls of a prison forever. She looks over at the, uh... She looks over at the flame billowing through the derelict. You've heard their voices, right? I heard it briefly. I... It's easy to think that there's nothing more that they would want. I think, and I'll say it as many times as it takes, there needs to be a world where everyone can live. You top and... it. You top it. Uh, you top Seder off. <laughs> Continue. Yeah. <laughs> and, I think, and I think a world where everyone is eternally living as the walls of a prison for one guy because they all hate him is certainly one way to do that, but there's also uh, the option to not do that and perhaps live more normal, peaceful lives. <laughs> Isaac sort of stands there in the back like, I understand the idealism, but uh, again, I don't think this is the kind of guy that you can take off the board without a comical amount of power. Guess what? She has it. He sort of, like, folds his arms and taps his foot a few times. I understand wanting to trust your luck and your odds and taking the guy down, but... Even with every single fighter that I've seen up to this point, every single person I've gauged, I still put my odds on her. So it's quite literally a matter of you think the person with the most highest chances of getting rid of him in a meaningful way is her. He nods. And there's not really any other reason. He nods. You, you're actually reminded of something, uh, Argos. It's what, um, it's what Theo said before this entire mess began. These people are self-interested and self-motivated. When it comes to morality, they'll always side with the best decision that they believe ensures their survival. When you look at Isaac in front of you, you feel that pretty much all the more keenly 
as you realize this man would choose the sacrifice of the person that he serves, as well as all these souls in the derelict, to remove one individual from the board. Mm -hmm. I can see where you're coming from, Isaac. But I can't help but think that there's a better option. I don't see where you're coming from. Theo <laughs> mm. looks down and away. I, to be honest, I used to think like you. I did. That was, that was my role. She sort of pauses. I don't know how to express it exactly, but it was like, you see, you see her like, sort of struggle with her hands for a moment. As a pyromancer, I was more or less created to carry part of this burden. I was the original one that carried that device. I was the one who would be the sacrifice. I... She thinks about how to say this. I I stopped being fit for it after a certain point. She looks over to you, Argos. When I came up to the surface to assist you all, Eternity realized that, well, his messenger bird was capable of thinking for herself. That's why I was stripped of my position, it's why I had that role taken from me. My role was functionally to act as the center of his new world, to call in and funnel all the flames, sacrificing my life so that his paradise might live. He gave us the weapon that the queen is intending to use to destroy him. But... Isaac... This is us simply accepting the roles that we've been given. If you're still thinking of this in terms of who to use this weapon on, what to use these resources for, you're still trapped within his maze. You can't escape like this, she shakes her head. Isaac, like, looks over. Looks over at you all. <laughs> And you guys are saying you've got a better way of going about things. Wouldn't that be the imperative, right? Pretty much suggesting if this way won't work, there's got to be something better out there. There's a way to find something better. Hmm. But it, it doesn't work unless we're all together on it. There is a reason why Eternity is trying to stop us. It's because if he thinks there's a chance we can win, he has to do something about it. <laughs> very, very good usage of evidence, genuinely. <laughs> because uh, Isaac actually, like, he stops and he listens, thinking. There is a certain wisdom to this. Never before, never before has Eternity directly messed with the situation. He personally hasn't come in and intervened. He's always just existed behind the scenes, manipulating things, uh, all of them quietly falling into play and to plan. But now he is directly participating. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I'll admit, that does add some credence. The big, big man usually doesn't participate himself, and the fact that he's gutting our numbers means he's scared. At the very least, I can acknowledge that. He's done something to spook him. Second point. Fio's eyes open. There is a better way. <laughs> as directly as possible, we found it. It's the path that we're currently on. She looks back over at Trouble. It's... 
When you need to open your eyes and see. She looks back over to Isaac. You... Argos, Treble, you get a strange feeling from Theo. It's uh, emanating almost in waves. You had that moment in the R&D lab, right? Where uh, you were talking to her about what she'd been configuring in the background. She played it off extremely lightly, as she usually does with... Well, she played it off extremely lightly, like she does with her gener general accomplishments. Theo is a soft touch, down to the core. But, um... There's a certain reality that you get spreading from her body to yours. This plan, the plan that you all are operating on, it requires a lot of trust, not only in Opio, which Isaac doesn't have, but... And this is the more painful part for her. It requires a lot of trust in her. So you see her almost, like, standing up, and you feel those individual notes of almost heartbreak as... Trouble and Willow, you've experienced up to this point, pyromancer after pyromancer getting in the way to stop exactly what's occurring. With even a modicum of faith, you could tell Isaac would move aside. And yet he stands in front of you. You remember Vinter. And suddenly you understand why Theo is angry. <laughs> yeah, Trouble can get it. It's, it's... Yeah. <laughs> to travel just like to herself in her mind she's like this is sort of the price of being everyone's baby sister <laughs> <laughs> Isaac like looks over and he's like he he similarly like looks beyond and um almost comes to a realization. Now, functionally speaking, I've let about two people pass me so far. I don't think they're even remotely a threat to the queen, but he pauses. I can tell if you manage to walk in that direction, the situation might change. So, I find myself standing here to make sure that you can't arrest control of this uh, machine away from her. That being said, again, if you prove to be stronger than me, that's actually fine. Be actually a relief for me. He, uh... He sort of, like, stretches lightly. It'd mean that I could trust all this to somebody else, but right now, I, uh... Still think I'm the world's best hope. And he says those words, and... For everyone here, you feel the weight and complexity of that. It's, uh, interesting to be facing down an individual that thinks of himself as the hero in this instance. But without a doubt, you get a sense from Isaac that he was picked for this job and he is doing this job specifically because he sees no other that suits this scenario. So... I guess if you want to be the custodians of the future and all that, prove it to me. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but if all we have to do is prove ourselves, it's not like we don't have to do that every time anyway. <laughs> Feels, feel like I'm... hate it. <laughs> I'm sorry, dear. <laughs> <laughs> she mutters off to the side. Sater pats you on the shoulder like, thanks, man. Ugh, seriously, I appreciate the boost. Yeah. Uh, Isaac? <sighs> yeah, yeah, you go, you go. No, well, I guess uh, it's a shame, but you'll see in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac's body sort of takes a step backwards as he 
looks at each of you in front of him. And he feels the weight, pressure, and presence of the flame behind him. Well, to be fully honest, I don't think this is exactly the type of thing that I could just lazily go about, so why don't we give it our best? He raises his hands and you watch something sort of change. His body starts to almost flicker and burn. And for a moment, you feel Fio stand next to you and take a step forwards almost to like try to protect or shield you, Argos. <laughs> as she's like, uh, as you expect him to pull out a reflection. You expect him to perform some sort of demonic release, some hidden talent or otherwise. Instead, the man lets the sensation wash through him. The sensation of fire. It's such a simple thing, but that day so long ago. Isaac found himself caught in the flames of the apocalypse. A significant portion of this flame would become the burning world, yet more would be trapped in the derelict. Yet still, for all those flames left over, for the flames that ended the world, they found themselves a new host. As this vision fades from the man, you look at an Isaac in front of you, overwhelming, changed, definitionally, and in every aspect of the world, word, the world's first esper. Ooh. Power overflows from the man, and you feel almost every mote of dust and destroyed segment of the derelict start to float around him. Everyone roll to die combat starting. <laughs> Let's fucking go. <laughs> I I don't remember why my orange is locked. Your orange is you can unlock it. Get, okay. Unlock that shit, my friend. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. You've been doing RTS <laughs> combat. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Bro, is his diabetes finally awoken? <laughs> <laughs> My fucking Guys, we gotta hit him with the God. insulin! <laughs> Real chill, bros! <laughs> Isaac, your blood sugar, man, please watch it. <laughs> you, okay. So, everybody's hit it. Uh, Yo, Theo, what do you got? Okay. She's locking in this. Don't say her. Yo, Seder's almost dead. Let me know at any point if you want to check in with what's going on with that dude. For now, you're going to engage in combat with Isaac. So, uh, Isaac, I got to make... Seder, you just uh, be back up. <laughs> Cheer us on, best. huh? I'll do my best to keep an eye on him. <laughs> okay. Uh, Treble, you get to go first. You get first control of the turn. All right. Well, I suppose I can trust Fio and Seder for this, but Willow, Argos, are you guys prepared to play the villain in someone else's story for once? <laughs> oh, uh, sure. That sounds fun. <laughs> Evil that campaign. Seems... Let's do it. <laughs> seems kind of out of character for Willow at the very least, but uh, he looks over at the remaining three of you. No, I'm not going to say it. That'd be rude. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I already counted you and Theo among my number. <laughs> ready? Let's go ahead and get this going then. Oh, shit. He throws an arm around you, Argos. That makes you neutral. <laughs> Let's sway you to the darkness. <laughs> So, what's the plan, Treble? All right, guys, do you want me to take my attack turn or my support turn first? Uh, I like buffs. Okay. <laughs> support turn. You like buffs? Do you, do you want buffs? Um, I don't... 
Anyone can take the buffs, it's fine. <laughs> this will is so strong, giving her the buff and seeing her damage go up is so appealing. <laughs> True. You look so powerful. <laughs> I don't know why your health bar did not show up, Argos. Uh, I will enter it in manually. Oh, uh, your bar total, uh, a glitch in my... Uh, I love this, whenever the macro errors. Uh, your health is currently 25 out of weed. <laughs> what's, uh, what's your health total? <laughs> Probably uh, weed, not weed. Apparently. Yeah, apparently it's <laughs> weed. <laughs> Let's look. 25? 25 out of... I think you're at like 40 or something. Really? Yeah. No, you'd, oh, you're Oh, I'm looking at the yeah. current. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fucking glitched. It's weed percent. Uh, yeah, no. Um, will it say? No. Let me, uh, let me just... Argos, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt, and I'm giving you 50 HP for the sake of us moving forwards. Uh, it's kind of okay. low, but okay. Oh yeah, it is 50. Yeah. <laughs> okay, going off gut instinct. Okay. So, uh, well, uh, Treble, you take your turn. You pass the thing to Willow. Yeah, I'm gonna give Willow uh, the pierce their heart bonus, which is effectively on your damage specifically. You get an extra D6 of true damage. So unavoidable DR piercing damage. Ooh, okay. I think we might need it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just my yes. first turn bonus. Thank you yeah. for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Isaac, are you ready to have your ideals tested? <laughs> are you ready to tell me if you are strong enough to come <laughs> to <stop> us? <laughs> Oh my god, Willow, so flame is piercing off the man, and as you go, Isaac, are you ready to have your ideals tested? The flame flares up, and your ESP actually processes it for a moment, and you see those eyes widen lightly. It feels like the man's waking up slightly. He doesn't respond, but the faintest shift in the head, an imperceptible signal that only you see, conveys a firm yes. <laughs> Back in the swamp, we don't debate with our words. She steps up. <laughs> we don't debate with our fists. I so tell me how strong you are. I believe last time you hit me with a fish. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna hit a whole lot harder than a fish. <laughs> so I moved five spaces, so yes. I get to add five to this. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, you're just rolling up and decking him. Willow really leading into being the villain. <laughs> <laughs> Your ideals! <laughs> you, tell me how you punch through the heavy barrier of flame around his body. Because yes, he is taking significantly reduced damage from this. Willow just wills the flames around him to move aside and punches him true. <laughs> Boom! The attack travels through and hits him at his core, and you feel bits of Isaac start to break and pull away as the flame re-hardens, and he's like, I don't know what ideal will make that hurt less, but I'm sure I'll figure it out on my go-around. Willow, who's next? All right, um, I'm gonna take my second turn. <laughs> oh yeah, understandable. <laughs> first, Willow's first turn, AKA Willow's second turn. And uh, Willow's just gonna go for a punch again. <laughs> <laughs> Wheeling around and going for the side of his head, you give me another punch. All right, okay. uh, why did it? I don't know why it dropped. Oh, why did it say ignited? Uh, you can, you don't need to ignite any of that. You get to keep your previous roll, so that'll be a 5, plus 5, plus 10. Okay, yeah, your attack wheels around and, oh, right, you're gonna clash, actually. Okay, your attack will actually succeed as you close in and aim for the jaw. Uh, you can ignite now to double the damage, if you wish. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I'll ignite now. <laughs> Boom! The attack travels towards his jaw as... It connects with Isaac, and you see his head go towards the ceiling for a moment, as you can feel that blow echo through his entire burning body. All right, Argos, I, I <laughs> opened him up for you. 
<laughs> All right. Well, uh, I just watched Willow do that very intently yeah. because you know who else was watching it? Fate Weaver. Let's go! <laughs> Fate Weaver can copy and store an ally's actions and then, you know, repeat it. <laughs> and I think that's just what I'll do with uh, Willow's first turn. With her I opener hope. there. Fio is going to uh, whirl around and uh, she is actually going to uh, buff you. Uh, she sees trouble buffing Willow and goes, ah, two can play at this game and is going to turn and buff you, Argos. Um, this attack will automatically clash and if it cl uh, and if you win the clash, we'll deal double damage. Uh, take a 1d6 bonus on it as well. She works her way over here and stands next to trouble. <laughs> Right, there's actually both of us okay. this time. <laughs> All right, second Willow, let's go. <laughs> okay, add one d six to that, and actually add two d six because that also copies Trouble's buffs. Oh yeah, all the bonuses. Go all the bonuses. Oh, sure damage, yeah. nice. <laughs> damage doubled by the golden sword. Uh, okay, so. Uh, Theo summons a, uh, golden sword out of nowhere and tosses it to you. How do you integrate it into the concept of punching Isaac in the face? <laughs> Here's your RP prompt. <laughs> uh, wouldn't it be a clash because it's, uh, orange versus red? It sure fucking would. Let me hit the button. Okay. There you go. <clears throat> so, Theo's already dealing your, uh, doubling your damage. You can ignite to quadruple it. Uh, you're... No. You're getting... Fucking buff stormed right now. I mean, we might as well capitalize on a good thing and ignite. Okay. So, tell me, how do you deck this man? <laughs> Willow? <laughs> yeah. It, uh, it is you, or yeah. a, a copy of you doing it. A phantom oh. doppelganger, yes. Created After literally of threads. Uppercuts Isaac. Yeah. It was just a front, a clone. She knew this the entire time and was not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> for a chest punch. <laughs> the Willow Barrage! Yes. The Willow Barrage! This is the power of working with your fucking tactician. As the attack travels through and hits Isaac in the gun, he actually stumbles backwards. Holy shit, you guys pack a punch. <laughs> he stumbles back up in place. Theo doesn't take a turn because she passed you the golden sword. And instead, uh, this man strides forwards. Oh no. <laughs> One oh, no. step after the other, he's going for it. <laughs> he walks his way in, tap, tap, tap down the line. Seder, my man. I forget what you locked in, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna, you need all the help you can get. He, locked he walks up. Oh, he it was walks a liar. Up I'm a liar. And, um, he raises one sword up in the air, and he tries to swing it down on Isaac. And Isaac, the same as before, raises a palm and simply suspends it with a level of force from his body. It doesn't reach him. It doesn't have all of the focus of your double buff strategies. It has nothing behind it. Seder is just swinging for the sake of it. It's so strange. Willow, you look over. Argos, you feel the connection. Theo and Treble, you see it even in the background. There's like, Seder's eyes are partially glazed over. It's the funniest thing in the world. Could each of you give me a roll to die? I'm a fucking god gamer. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble with her three sixes. You can unlock your dice off of this. Uh, be saying like, yes, please do it, god, you are going to need them. <laughs> you look over at Seder in this moment as he swings the sword, fails utterly, and you're like, bro, what the hell? As, uh... You, um... You get a sidelong view into the side of Seder's brain. Lights dance in front of his eyes. And 
you realize what he's saying in this moment as an Isaac in front of him. What Seder has been seeing. <laughs> <laughs> the dew glistening on a flower. Brilliant light echoing down. He sees the oceans. Resplendent, distant, cast in golden hues. He sees the brilliant snow caps melting. The stark white eventually giving way to the earth buried below. He sees a bird chirping in the distance, every single one of its flaps sending cascades through his psyche. He sees some sort of a creature, oh so familiar yet distant. <laughs> he sees brilliant mountain peaks and that which lies beyond. He sees life itself. And in this moment you comprehend to this man He has no intention of dying. Because in this moment, he wheels his way backwards, having utterly failed with his sword, blows his stack, throws another one, and follows up. Another attack that whirls around and Isaac simply deflects from his back. Satyr's smile deepens. It widens. This is a deep and profound happiness. Yet, it has no bearing on the current situation. It has no bearing on reality anymore. His eyes glisten as he darts backwards, igniting and throwing yet again. And finally, the last attack whirls around and strikes Isaac in the back. And he seems genuinely shocked as Seder's expression grows that deep, that much deeper and more profound. Isaac almost looks over at you all and, like, looks back at Seder, realizing what's happening with the man. He's not perceiving reality. Right now, Seder is simply put on cloud nine. His worldview, his psyche, everything shifting over the course of not only this fight, but all of the previous ones. And as it does, his ESP changes as well. Every place that Seder's been, every single thing that he has touched through his long journey, he's been able to recall and teleport to. But he's recognized something. His entire life. It makes up who he is at this present moment. Everything he's touched, it makes who up the man that you see before you. Simply put, life is beautiful. <laughs> DNA is an illusion. You are your entire road thus far. Remove the mark restriction and the, from mark and recall. If you have, uh, if you've been there, you may return there. Every moment made you. So long as creatures are within ten feet of you, you may drag them uh, with if they're drawn into your worldview. No save. You may force creatures to teleport who are not uh, touching them by a roll to do. Similarly. Everything that he's touched in the past is recallable via his shadow on one and one condition only. Born and raised in a geist-pilled society, after all, he snaps his fingers and performs his finishing attack. Something flies from the void, a brilliant pitch-black portal uh, uh, billowing up above Seder's head. Seder can pull things from his shadow so long as he has purchased them monetarily. The Seder mobile flies through the air, careening towards <laughs> Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac holds the hand backwards, suspending it like... You tried to hit me with a car. Yeah, to be honest, I thought it'd work. <laughs> Isaac scratches the back of the head where the attack traveled through, and he like looks over to the rest of you who are making faces like this. <laughs> and Isaac like Isaac like Theo's mouth is like open a little bit. She's like, I don't get it. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, Theo. I think something in him has broken. <laughs> Isaac looks at each of you and is like, okay, so if I like grievously wound him, you'll like get him, right? 
I don't want to just kill your guy. <laughs> Sater's body arcs backwards as he catches another blade and readjusts it. And um, then Argos, your comms go off. <laughs> Your comms go off and you hear a hiss on them as before you even have a chance to at, uh, answer them. My man is going to take his turn. <clears throat> you hear Serve's voice flare up in your ear, but you don't have a chance to actually register what's happening. Um, Everybody back here, roll to do for me. Oh my god, okay. Trouble. Look, I gotta save my boy. I, <laughs> put, I have to save Seder. He's my guy. I believe it's this one. Gravity Wellspring. <clears throat> you guys are pulled in. At the start of your next turn, you will need to roll to do again or wound and be stunned. You and Theo are yanked towards the center of this gravity well as you feel your bodies crush. No amount of health will save you from this as Trouble manages to dart away and backwards as Isaac takes a step forwards and he is going to use. Uh... He's going to use Scyfling to tar up, target up to six additional props and just batter you all with random garbage from the environment, including the Seder Mobile. Uh, Willow, he's throwing the car no. at you. <laughs> yeah. You're the one who left big things. <laughs> uh, choose amount of d6s. He gets 1d6 bonus on this, and it'll deal extra damage. Willow, roll to die versus this. Jesus! Okay, car coming your way. Uh, Argos, wait, roll to die I, for me. Yeah. Do I roll to do since I'm red? Oh, wait, no, oh. I locked in. I ignited. Yes! So, uh, Willow, that will be a grand total of... Uh, 18 damage for you, as you get hit by a car. Uh, Treble, roll to die versus, uh... He's gonna pick up pipes and just throw three of them at you, to be honest. Um, okay, roll to die. Ooh, okay, first one missed. Give me another one. Miss another one? Uh, dude, Treble... Fucking treble showed the fuck up today, dude. Oh my oh, gosh! Okay. Narrate how you dodged the gravity well and also all of the objects. <laughs> oh, treble! <laughs> treble, treble Which sees time? the gravity well starting, and she's like, she she darts backwards because she's like, oh, I don't want to get caught in that. I saw what that shit did before. <laughs> she backs up and then. She sees Willow get hit by a car, and she's like, oh god. And then she just sees all of the pipes hovering in the air, and she's like, I understand. And it is the it is the world's funniest, like, game of whack-a-mole, where Treble is just darting around, like, why me? Why me? <laughs> is it because I dodged the other one? Listen, he has crowd-controlled Willow with a car, parentheses, he believes, and the other two with gravity. <laughs> well, he's gonna, he throws three pipes at you, misses, and then is going to aim, that was four, two attacks at Seder. One. Boom. Uh. Okay, uh. My boy's he, not gonna survive. No, winter. Seder will not survive the winter as he runs forward, rips two segments of the wall off, and literally forms a ball of uh he forms a ball of metal in the air and almost superheats it with his mind and just wraps Seder up in a raw coffin of metal. Uh Seder, that's gonna be a lot of damage, my friend. Okay, first second my man is perishing <laughs> God, okay. him from this? <laughs> he wraps him in the He's coffin so and boom, touches down here as isaac starts to step towards you willow under the car trouble you still got another go yeah it's my turn it's my attack turn yeah. okay oh goodness <laughs> <laughs> 
stay away from my patient. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. This, is, this is Trouble's patient. This is the guy that Trouble has spent her entirety of the time at Opia treating medically, and she's like, I'm watching him literally get crushed to death by metal plates. <laughs> oh my god. Trouble is going to approach for it, like, she knows there's a gravity well in the center of this, and she's yeah. like, okay. Oh, do I think I have what it takes? She's like, mm -hmm. like looking Isaac up and down, and she's like, oh, I won't know until I try. You see her reach her hand up above her head and pull out a long conductor's wand as she summons one of her reflections, and she's going to use her ESP amplific uh, amplification to try and counter ESP well. <laughs> okay, you're going to try to counter the gravity well. Um, in this case, uh, Argos, Theo, uh, this is the gravity well will grow unstable. They are both just applying it at full force. It is not a contest of who is stronger. It is a contest of can you use the disruption to squeeze out? Add a 3d6 bonus to your efforts to escape. Uh, okay. And give me a roll to do now. Me? Uh, yes. Or when it asks you for 3d6, uh, punch in 3d6 on top of it. Theo floats in this direction and pulls herself free. Okay, add 3d6. Good roll. Easy! You and Theo, like, uh, tell me how you escape. Tell me how you get out the second the gravity well's lifted, even slightly. Oh, well, that's easy. I'm just gonna use Fate Weaver to shoot a string over to this <laughs> big metal thing over here and pull myself out. You pull yourself out, uh, Theo... You see it happen for the first time, Argos. She flies out using her silly little head wings. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's miraculous. Uh, she tries to, she sets herself upright and gets ready, prepped to support you again when the next turn rolls around. And then you remember. Oh shit, your comms are going off. Oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. Oh right. And then, <laughs> Forgot to uh, turn on Do Not Disturb. You you hear on the other side of things surf coming through like Argos, what's happening? Well, uh, just you know, fighting him. Yeah, he's a normal boss, not even a mini boss. <laughs> you uh, you you hear him on the uh, on the other end like, well, uh, I've got some, I've got some bad news. Hit me with it. Well. In the world above, a few things have happened. Over here, lost signal of this one disappeared from the battlefield, and the can uh, as as our uh, camera pans around, it comes over here, Sir sending you the data from the conflict between these two, as. Okay. <clears throat> Over here. The mysterious Hector Mask, enabling not only his first red attribute, but his second red attribute, and then his third most forbidden red attribute, Red 3, fights to the best of his abilities against Eternity. A fight that has lasted until this exact moment. Right now, Hector lies in pieces, spread across the road, burning away into nothingness. Return to Exulansis and await your punishment. For now, those are my orders. He waves his hand as Hector opens his mouth to challenge him one final time to yell that he's not done yet when Eternity sweeps his palm and wipes the man off the map. Elsewhere. <clears throat> We're also receiving all sorts of strange reports that, well, the Basil skids that were supporting us down in the uh, world below are disappearing. They're all 
They're all popping up here. Easy come, easy go. <laughs> oh, four. <clears throat> you, uh... You've been working your way through the world looking for not only Saru, but, uh... Well... What you should be doing at this exact moment. She's probably trying to escort civilians at this point. Yep. You worked your way back to this area, and you start to feel real funny. Uh... She's, like, looking around, like, kind of grabbing her stomach, like, what? What in the world? And then you pop, disintegrating into a pool of nothingness at your feet. O4 is pulled into the mass of basils far, far in the world below. And your comms start lighting up again and again, Argos. People asking for help, Ruth chiming in on the verge of death, what should uh, she do? Civilians reaching the location, the cacophony reaches almost overwhelming mo- uh, an almost overwhelming level, and then... You find yourself... Exhaling. And staring straight ahead. <clears throat> as you almost feel... A weight again in the back of your head. I don't know how to put this. Um, this has happened a few times in the past. Once a while back, you were defending Cast and Breach from uh, one of the attacking strangers, and you had to push yourself beyond the limits of what should be physically possible. You feel yourself sickeningly approaching that door. And time seems to almost dilate in that moment. You feel electricity running through your body. If you just let it in just a little bit more, your brain can probably keep up with it. You can match the strain. But looking at the person in front of you, looking at the situation around you, how much further down this road are you willing to walk? So Argos, I offer you a choice. Here. There you go. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. Come on, Argos, let me in. Come on. <sighs> You love having the feedback. <laughs> <laughs> you, you place your hand on the electricity, and it starts to almost crackle. How deep do you let it go? Right up to my heart, but not, not <laughs> in my heart. You know, both. Ye Literal, the organ. And meta you know. metaphorically. <laughs> <laughs> you focus on this, and you feel the feedback start to move through your body as... <sighs> you can do it. You know Root's position. You know the moves she needs to make. You know how to rearrange Breach. You know how to push everyone exactly as much as they need to be pushed. And the feedback starts to spread. You feel circuitry replacing veins. Your nervous system converting to sheet metal as... A hand actually touches down on yours. And you get a similar sensation. It's a funny thing. But you look over at someone who said something similar to you long ago. Looking over at Fio, her eyes sort of uh, light up and she's like, <clears throat> didn't I promise to split the burden with you? If things get, <clears throat> if things get hard, particularly if they get too hard, it's the role of somebody like me, a listener, to hear what your heart is crying out for and to help you deliver on that, right? Fio. I'd she... ask you to do that. <laughs> she smiles. I think by no short measure. 
you might be underestimating me. She clasps your hand, and you actually feel areas that the feedback was spreading to recede. It stops dead as uh, Theo locks her eyes, which now open, and can see her listening ability return to her again. Uh, almost fixate on yours and just like, wow, oh, it's gotten pretty deep in there, huh? <laughs> yeah, I figured I'd need to. <laughs> she smiles and she's like, <clears throat> there's one massive downside to standing alone or standing at the head of things. She looks over at Isaac. That's the face of a guy that pushed himself well beyond his limits. That's the face of a guy who's trying to stand alone and sacrifice himself alone. I turned my back on the pyromancers in no small measure because I wanted to make sure that they couldn't do that to themselves. I'd be downright a hypocrite if I let you do that to yourself right in front of me. <laughs> Her eyes fixate on you again. So, for now, why don't we focus on something else? She, uh, she continues patting you. Instead of, <clears throat> instead of pushing ourselves to a realm that we can't ever reach, let's accomplish what we're capable of with the people in front of me. She, uh, with the people in front of us. Her expression almost seems to, like, invite a very specific answer. Um, trust me. After all, you're the one that reached out to me originally. Now this is me reaching back out to you. Theo, you've always, you've always been there. You just can't let me down, can you? <laughs> Theo, positioning herself. I've let lots of people down in my time. <laughs> might as well succeed on a, fr uh, might as well succeed with a blankish slate, right? Theo <laughs> like looks over to, Theo looks over to trouble. You cool with helping me coordinate things? I'm sure, what do you need? Uh, well, we're leading an army, right? Yeah. So, might as well support them to the best of our abilities. Argus, you're about to get the help of uh, the two greatest muses to ever live. And, up above, you feel something actually genuinely change on the battlefield. As it was when Constant first appeared, a secondary presence actually moves through the area. Theo is going to share her invincibility buff with a character like Ruth. As Ruth darts forwards, she manages to actually push back against this larger demon. Keeping herself together, she's like, Yo, Argos, I didn't die! <laughs> Good job, Ruth. <laughs> we, we owe Theo a drink. <laughs> and over here... These almost dead units start to travel in this direction. Hey, Treble. Yeah? You're being directed to this locale. Remote usage of your ESP should be more than possible, correct? After mm. all, a certain someone is altering the weather in Ciela 24-7. It's not that difficult. <laughs> As they close in the distance, pulling themselves away, uh, Saru's loudly yelling on the comms like, Hey, we could use a boost down here, but we're almost fucking dead! <laughs> I can't heal you that much, but I can heal you a little bit till you get to a better place. You feel, uh, you watch as, again, a recreation of a legend from ages past. Muses joining the battlefield, inspiring those that stand forth, and, again, another legend manifests itself. Eternity, as he pulls himself away from Hector. <clears throat> Staggers backwards. Sorry I'm late. Ascalon sets herself up in a sniper position. Argos, I'm pretty uh from here on out, I'm at your command. Tell me where to aim and I'll take the shot. So, Ascalon's rules. She has a range! A range that reaches across two of these octants, meaning from where she is currently, she can touch the pretty much the upper half of the map. Uh, she can deal with threats from a distance. She is also incredibly mobile. Ascalon is the incredibly rare hero unit variety. She positions herself here and uh, basically goes, waiting on orders. You command me, it seems like, uh, 
It seems like the singers are handing out, uh, handling everybody else's support now, so you got my back? You betcha. <laughs> Glad Ask to have you here. <laughs> Ascalon locks down the way as the crosshair is drawn on eternity. And down in the world below, hey, Mask. If you're here. I am. My internet's just being buggy, so... Lovely! Me. <clears throat> In the old world. <clears throat> These two... managed to make it all the way to the final, uh... Make it to the final fruit. Okay, man, you want to do the honors? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, I know you got plastic explosives... It has been a while since I've got to blow anything up. I was monkeying around behind the bar one time, and I thought it was like, wow, that's a big container of flour cows got back here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a reason that was locked. <laughs> you move your way forward. All right. Set the explosive. Time for the fireworks. Bang! The flare starts to spread through the area as... Uh, Argos, the report comes back in. Fucking good news for once. <clears throat> all right. <laughs> all right. We finally made it. It looks like all of the fruits have been dealt with. All that's left is the tree itself. Uh, the question comes down. Argos, are you going to use that nuke? <laughs> we don't need a nuke. We just need an axe. <laughs> Okay, I know I'm almost dead, but please, please, <laughs> please, I've been prepping my entire life for this. <laughs> it's all you, buddy. <laughs> he <laughs> oh, picks himself back up and starts to run his way deeper towards the Ilmerian tree, taking, <laughs> getting shot multiple times on the way over by the it. devious end table. <laughs> Picking himself up and running into the mass up in front of him. And this, Argos, is the situation that you find your focus coming back to. And interestingly, it's at this moment that almost a funny thought starts to cross your mind. The man in front of you, in terms of battle power, does seem... Almost insurmountable, and yet... When was the last time you had good news? <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice change. I feel like I can do this. <laughs> he... The man shockingly tips his head and actually, like, looks over at you. Huh. Okay, something's changed. That's kind of interesting. He takes a uh, he takes a step backwards as the gravity well starts to burn and boil around him. Well then, let's continue. Let's continue. Hey Willow. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I'm giving you a chance specifically because you've been trapped under that car for a little bit, <laughs> and I don't see Willow being stuck there for long. <laughs> Uh, hey, Jay, can I tag yeah. a prop? <laughs> you know you can! <laughs> you see Willow slowly rise from other, under the car. <laughs> hey, Isaac! <laughs> you forgot something! <laughs> She's going to swing the car at <laughs> Give me a roll. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll let you out from under the car so you can roll for it. Give me that roll to do. All right. Uh, Tanya prop. Uh, I forgot. It's one d six, right? Yes. Uh, this would be a two d six bonus. I hit you okay. with two d six. You hit him with two d six. You clash and win against Isaac. Uh, you get ignite for double damage. Uh, yeah, you know what? Sure, I'll ignite for double damage. Willow, after all of this happens, and you watch Argos's, like, 
you watch as the situation changes around Argos from beneath the car. You swing, you reel back with the car, you hit him, and he goes flying into the pipes. <laughs> Boom! He impacts it with a heavy thud. Flames spilling and intermingling with the derelict below. I gave you that. I gave you that for free, by the way. That's not your turn. <laughs> Next turn of combat did not start. It just felt wrong for him to gloat in front of Bicard Willow that long. <laughs> <laughs> you may be the strongest Esper, but I'm the strongest woman. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Theo. Theo Theo's entire expression lights up. Uh, she pauses, looks over at you, Argos, and is like, I have a realization. Yeah? Well, that's kind of scary. <laughs> In the best way, though, right? <laughs> Theo, nodding lightly, <clears throat> as you all walk in and prepare for another round of combat. We're taking a break! Bathroom, water, etc. <clears throat> Yuki. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just for uh, VOD's sake, since we said it in the priest room, we're now. Uh, Brennan couldn't make it the session. Uh, he is stuck in an airport. Wonderful time. Everybody loves doing that. Layovers, amazing. We love it. Yeah, so uh, how is everyone doing today? Let's see. You can't believe that we Thanos snapped 04? Dude, I Thanos snapped Circuit. You think I will stop there? They're my characters. I'm free to kill them as I please. Even though that time I didn't do it, Basil did it to her. Ruth isn't dead, Ascon is here, my life is good? Yeah. She's not fucking dead? I, like, dude, I believe she's alive in there. I believe. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a believer. Gurley was just trying to find Saru and literally, like, the fucking havoc and then got popped. Life out is of nowhere. beautiful. Yeah. Life is beautiful. But trouble, like, I think it, he's finally snapped, guys. Seder! Seder's <laughs> finally <laughs> fucking lost his marble. Good for him, oh god, bro. he's hallucinating stock images. Yeah, bro. That's how you know it's the good shit, man. <laughs> oh no, he ran out of budget. <laughs> I'm I'm happy, dude. Can't wait for the Seder elevator scene. <laughs> Glad I got a buff to replace all the uh, basils on the field that I lost. Yeah, dude. So tragic that your expendable soldiers are n expended. Yeah. <laughs> what a shame. What a shame. Anyway. Anyway. Ba, 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 ba. I'm back. Jay! <laughs> Yo! Jay! Dude, that's me! It's him! Fuck, that man. motherfucker! It's me, that motherfucker, okay? That, that motherfucker. Setting up the next scene. I'll be your back, actually, real quick. Holy sh fuck, there he goes. Okay. Chat, I hope you're having a good time tonight. And if you're not, stop it. <laughs> I fucking love Seder so much. My, my genuine reaction, why? <laughs> I, I'm joking, I adore that man, probably. <laughs> I love him so much, he is my little Blurbo. <laughs> He has finally <laughs> lost his damn board. And Trouble's like, I. How do I mitigate the, the self immolation madness. he's doing right now? Listen, <laughs> life is beautiful. <laughs> Trouble, Trouble, did, Trouble has spent no. so much of her time treating this man's medical condition. And she's like, wow, Seder's finally cured. And he's like, free to live his own life. And he got like, you know, like two months of fucking. No. More like a year. He had like a year of life and then. Circuit died and he lost his damn marbles. Listen, look at how like, good he's doing. Could a depressed man like, do this? Could a depressed yeah. man think of a bird? Yeah, I no, so. I don't think so. 
He's like, oh god, I don't know how to feel about this. Okay. This. <clears throat> okay. She's like, I gotta shove him in a closet somewhere. I gotta put him in a bag and hide him. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Chad says, could a depressed man crash his car into a pyromancer? I don't think so. I don't think that's possible. <laughs> I'm so glad that everyone's baffled by this man. <laughs> yeah, boy. Thank you, Skinny Lover 3. You never know when it will end, so you have to cherish it. Life is beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Yippee! Hello. Okay. Okay? <clears throat> I think I'm almost good. You waking the fuck up? You locked in? Dude, I've been locked in this entire time, man. I thought of a bird. Whoa. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> I, thought, I thought of a fucking bird. I thought of a groundhog, man. I'm unbeatable. A groundhog? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the secret behind Satan's powers. <laughs> Are, aren't they a sham? What? <laughs> aren't groundhogs liars? What do you mean? <laughs> how dare you say that about That's Mike? That's what pulled how... pork sandwiches are made out of, right? How dare... How... Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grounding all of you. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 because you're the groundhog. Expert. At the expert part. <laughs> expert at fun killing. <laughs> <laughs> you're about to become an expert at getting grounded. <laughs> okay, get ready. Uh... The person yep. asking what's Trouble's Conductor one called? It's called like Maestro's Magnum Opus or something like that. Yeah, it goes hard. <clears throat> okay, so. This is how things are gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna move it like this. Roma, you here? Yeah. We're going to uh we're gonna come back to Argos in a little bit. We're we're gonna do a scene before that. Uh oh, okay. I the thing. okay. It's time. It's way too chill. No, I think that's adequately chill. <laughs> uh, maybe like this one. Stefano, you uh, come back into the throne room after the uh, the most recent uh, kerfuffle. And uh, as you cross the threshold, you see the sight in front of you. Uh, it's uh, pretty... Uh, it's never been like this before, is the best way to put it. You look over at the queen, who is... Angrily tapping her fingers on the throne off to the side. And you look at Mike, who is sitting in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> the queen thinks to herself that awful little gremlin snuck her way in here before Stefano and I could get in here and did. Something. I don't know what it is. I don't know why she did it. She's saying she got lost. <laughs> Mike, remaining in the corner, does not make eye contact. <laughs> uh, hey, Mike. I'm gonna roll to see how good you did. For the love of God, roll higher than a two. That... Thank you, Mike. That is a number. <laughs> Mike... Doesn't make eye contact with Stefano or the Queen. Uh, I, you are the only one here, Stefano, to break the awkward silence as you move into the area and the Queen's like... Welcome back, Stefano. Good evening. Uh, how are the two of you feeling? 
Uh, I'm, I'm sure that was a lot of adrenaline. I, I mean, no, not for me. I got lost on my way to the bathroom. <laughs> the queen snorts. <laughs> it's like, right, right, you awful little goblin. <laughs> Why don't you come stand over here, Mike? She's in the corner because she's grounded. <laughs> oh, she's in timeout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're supposed to have a civilized conversation with her. She's in time out. Mike, Mike's eyes. She looks over at the queen, and her eyes well up with the saddest, warbliest uh, expression. As the queen's like, "Fine, fine, fine. You can leave time out." <laughs> Visibly, actually annoyed as Mike walks her way out and she's like thank you <laughs> <laughs> the queen drums her fingers on the uh on the throne and is like all right so at the very least i understand that you're probably biding for time she almost tips her head slightly mike's like i got lost on my way to the bathroom <laughs> okay you're gonna just stick to that sure fine <laughs> the queen sort of sighs shakes her head and she's like in that case since we seem to be stuck on this point i will simply move beyond it wonderful i have now a question that... okay she looks over at mike your experiences as an artificial intelligence i am not only curious what the creation process looks like i'm curious what it's like to be created from flame itself, not a naturally occurring flame, but instead one manipulated in the lab. She, uh, like almost leans back. Mike sort of pauses. She's like, uh, huh. The long answer would take a bit to explain, so I'm gonna go for the short one. Being an AI and being sort of, like, raised as one is, like, um... It's pretty much as complicated or uncomplicated as the people that created you. That's a good way to put it. There are extensive complications with not only our development, but our creation, based on almost the desire or the intention for each AI. Like, um... We were each handed an info packet that we were told that we're allowed to do whatever we want with. And each of us sort of took it in a radically different direction. Based on who that info packet was and who we were, we all have very different relationships with not only ourselves, but our method of creation. If you're asking for like a one to five star review on the process, I'm in favor because it made me. <laughs> she sort of like fidgets while saying the queen um the queen's like okay interesting at the very least but the way that flame is held in the derelict the possibility of emergent consciousnesses is more than possible there is enough flame here, and it is focused enough to give rise to new beings. Almost as if they were being born within our walls. She looks at the area around her. Yet, most of this pipework and machinery exists to constantly cycle the flame. To make sure that the individuals that are currently here do not propagate, create more. I have an understanding, at the very least, that the situation that the derelict is in is not the ideal circumstance for living, breathing beings. The dead that populate these walls should not propagate. My kingdom is closed. Even if power grows, I don't wish new selves to be formed here. And yet, Opia has done the thing that I avoid that I fight against tooth and nail. They have created life intentionally from concentrations of flame. So, I suppose I was curious what manifestation it would take. Like, huh. Yeah, I think it just 
comes down to some extent to who's watching over you and mostly access to what forms of enrichment and help you can get. Like, um, I'm bad at processing things. I get overwhelmed easily and it kind of panic. Um, but, uh, the people that created me realized that and then just slowed stuff down. And instead of asking me 9 million questions a second, it shifted over to here's uh, 9 million hours of just continuous footage pulled from the Exulansis archives related to extinct species of animals. <laughs> <laughs> Mike sort of mumbles to herself. I don't think you'll get infinite animal videos in the derelict. So I think it's probably wise because I don't think you'd be able to accommodate for all of their needs. So yeah, don't probably don't start making people in your kingdom of the dead. That uh <laughs> she sort of pauses. And uh the queen like waves a hand. And yet just the same we made demons. Hmm. Mike's eyes actually turn over to you to Stefano. Yes. Uh, I'm curious. How do you feel about... I'm like, I talked a bunch about mine. How do you feel about your creation? Hmm. Being a stranger is... a bit different. I think I touched on it briefly while we were on our way to Belleth. Um... I can't really speak for the other strangers because... I get a sense that on some level I'm slightly different or didn't didn't quite come out the same as them he sort of tilts his head like he's trying to figure out how to say it I'm definitely a stranger and I'm not this isn't me trying to say that I'm like an well, outcast or anything no, he's just putting his hands up no I really get it because like I came out super different than my siblings and like it just it boils down to what I was saying before. It's about whether or not the location you're in is capable of accommodating your needs. Yeah, 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 I get it. Mm, he nods. <laughs> <laughs> the queen, like, <laughs> the queen squinting. You feel her visibly like, whoa. <laughs> There's a certain extent where most demons have a condition where the perceptions of uh, beings of flame sort of alter our actions and stuff like that. I don't actually suffer from that condition the same way the others do. There are certain aspects of my existence that are slightly strange comparatively, but I have my own conditions I need to worry about. When you summon a stranger, it's different for all of us because it depends on what the summoner is trying to call out to, I suppose. Um, everyone has a different idea in mind for what they want their stranger to be. For me, Isaac wanted someone who would understand the world around them and the people around them, because he's he's the pyromancer of inner world, so he focuses so much on the self, he wanted someone who would try to understand the world around them. Um, there's sort of, it's, it's considered to be the stranger's purpose of my purpose would be to understand the world. But it's also sort of like the keyword that you put into a search bar. The only way that... He sort of thinks and tries to figure out how to say it. For quite a long time, I didn't exist. Or, I guess I did exist, but I wasn't alive. It's like being the dust on the shelves of a room, and then suddenly being a person. Oh. <coughs> Mike blinks, and Stefano, you imagine it. You imagine this room that almost represents, well, the world and the motes of dust that comprise you, or that should comprise you. 
it's, um, it's quite strange for me. Isaac wanted someone who would understand. That's the kind of person that he called out to. Being a stranger is being in existence. You don't have to be a person. You can be a person if the person wants a person. You simply have to exist. For me, think of me like the dust in a room. I was simply dust sitting on the shelves of the space I was in. And I certainly... I spent a long time in a space that I was incapable of understanding what I was, why I was there, and why anything existed around me. It was quite confusing, I suppose. The... It's... Imagine the dust in your room trying to understand what it was, what the room was, who you were, and why it was there, without any proper understanding of what existing even is. That's sort of the situation I was in for quite a long time before before Isaac summoned me. He's, he summoned someone who wanted to understand and even though I'm someone who can't quite understand, I really wanted to. If he had asked for anything else, I wouldn't be the person who came through the door. In order to understand things, I needed an opportunity to, and that's what he gave me. So when I came into the world, it became my duty and purpose to understand, because that was already something I wanted to do. My condition was something I already had. I've spent quite a long time trying to understand the world, and through understanding the world, trying to understand myself. It's like being in a pitch black room, that's yourself. And the only way you can ever understand what's in the room around you is by seeing something outside the window. And then when you see it, then you can suddenly feel it in the room with you. Or you can feel the absence of it. <clears throat> Comprehension of the self via comparison. Hmm. I didn't originally have a human form, but when I got here, one of the first things I came to understand were the people here, and most everyone has some kind of humanoid form, so I thought perhaps if I made one for myself, I would be able to understand myself better if I viewed myself through that lens. It's created kind of a schism but it does work for me on some level. You watch the queen's <clears throat> expression. It's the slightest, it's the slightest movement, but I mean, after being attuned to her for this long, you're kind of used to these subtle movements she makes while in the armor. And you actually see her head sort of creak to the side just a little bit. And she's like, interesting. I believe somebody that was on her way here just redirected herself. Maybe she overheard. Mm -hmm. The queen sort of like leans back in the chair and she's like, no, I find this topic of conversation quite interesting. Uh, Mike, your rebuttal? Mike, like, what do you, why are you running this like a debate? Also, I don't have a rebuttal. I kind of get it, but I also, experientially things are slightly different for me. <laughs> Queen, <laughs> the queen like leans in. She's like, "I'm interested in hearing your opinion, just the same." Okay, I guess holding off on that. Sort of. Huh. She sort of pauses and looks over at Stefano. So you sort of struggle for what's lost inside the darkness of the room, right? Hmm. What if it's something I didn't even understand before? I knew it exists. I know it exists, but I can't quite grab it? Uh, do you know why? Like, um, I guess I understand this metaphor to some extent because for me, I look at a lot of things in my life and she sort of struggles to, to say the next bit. I don't really grab on or, or go for things because uh, 
it's not like they're lost in darkness or anything. I'm just, um, to tell you the truth, I'm just kind of scared. Scared to understand them? I, I don't know. Uh, Mike, like, lightly shrugs their shoulders. Interesting. Following question, then. Mike, what are you afraid of? And then, somewhere far away, time has passed. And a shot is fired as it travels through the city. Knights fall in on the world above. A meteor crater rests on eternity as the shot that Ruth dropped on the man travels straight through. Ascalon moves her way down the roof, receiving another order from Argos and taking the shot. The uh, arrow flies wide and streaks towards eternity, striking forwards and then hitting at nothing. Ascalon pulls her way backwards. <clears throat> Hey, Argos, can I get a scan of the surrounding area? On it. You look through the city at large, Argos. You get a hard confirmation of something. The man has disappeared. You drove him off. At least for now. The attack feels over. Night settling in. Where is he? God. He's gone. Uh, uh go gone? Go gone? Okay, um, he's got- You shot him that hard, I, huh? I shot him real- Uh, <laughs> Argos, can you direct me to the nearest, uh, door? I'm coming to you guys. Sounds good. She hops down from the roof and starts to jump off in this direction traveling one step at a time she uh moves her way through the area as over here uh someone who broke off from the geist infiltration mission uh actually sort of rests in place like waving to ascalon as ascalon pass uh blasts past it seems due to the efforts of someone in this area the assault on this city came to an almost abrupt halt when uh Compulsion made good on calling her troops backwards? Uh, Ascalon hops in place. Something about this doesn't exactly... It doesn't strike right in her brain, but just the, uh, just the same. Reviewing the footage of La Intense. <laughs> huh. Is this war is different than the ones she's fought in the past. <laughs> <laughs> she moves her way over to the Helena door and vanishes into the uh, world below. Over here, this squad winds up wrapping up their unit. Danger, as before, screaming and crying. He manages to bring everything to a halt, and, like, you get the call in. Hey, Argos! Are you okay there, Danger? I, did, I think we're good. Is it done? <laughs> Looks like, for now, at least. <sighs> we group and, uh, get, get it together. Okay. I know, you, I know you can yeah. pull this off. You're good. Thank You're fine. You. You're fine. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so you, it seems like the the war on the surface has calmed down. You have a moment to muster your troops. Where do you send them? Do you send any of them back to Opia? Do you leave them all here? Everyone on the map is available for you to command. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I definitely want to leave some here just in case. And we yeah. have the doors for fast travel, so that's... Yes. <laughs> uh, Breach to get yourself back to Opia. Breach, like, thanks. Um, hey, uh, I'm going to ask for something extremely selfish. And if this gets everyone killed, I'm really deeply sorry about it. Uh, okay, I uh, if it's going to get people killed, I'll deny uh, it, but... Could you just, like, distract Pixie for five minutes? I just gotta sneak past. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. I fucking owe you a drink. <laughs> you, Pixie on the line, like, 
Most of the civilians have been escorted from the uh, from the current location. We're moving them into locations around Goldenrod as well as Grabnir. Most of the buses are away. We should be good. The shelters are mostly empty or reserved for those that physically can't be transported. Excellent work. She turns and she's like, uh, where do you want me, boss? I want you to head to the center of this area and heal up anybody that needs healing. Can do. She heads off this way as Breach goes the other direction and you just get the DM. Thank you. <laughs> as they head back over towards Opia. Uh, Pixie joins up with Ruth. Ruth gathers in the middle of the area. Um, Sonnet appears on your comms and is like, just for the record... I uh, heard the communications with Fio and otherwise. Sudden res uh, respect, uh, sudden support from the various muses. I gotta say, on some level, I kind of respect it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for your help, Sonnet. <laughs> no problem. I missed my chance with Eternity, so if you find him anywhere, I suppose I'll take the shot. But Seeing as what I saw before, I don't necessarily know if I need to at this point. Seems like I should maybe trust Fio a little bit more. That, yeah, that seems to be a good strategy, and as far as I'm concerned, at least. Okay, I'll try to... Do you want me back here or down below? I can back up whoever you want at this point. Uh, Let's send you down, down below. She quietly nods and then disappears in a puff of flame. Uh, cool. I'm gonna keep trying to find O4, Saru says, before moving away. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure she's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the situation manages to more or less, like, resolve itself. You find a moment of quiet as... Down here. <clears throat> Isaac picks himself up out of the wall. And he <clears throat> touches down on the ground. Hey, Mask, I have a question. Are you here? Is your internet good? I am, and it seems for the moment. Lovely. Isaac stumbles his way forwards, looking at each of you. Head swimming slightly. He moves closer, and you get an impression of something. There is something going on with Isaac's body that you can't quite put your finger on. For him, you try to listen to that song of the heart, and all you're getting is howling, static. It's an overwhelming sensation. But for Isaac, he actually sees something slightly different. The man sees the flame that's consuming him. But what rests in front of his eyes right now It isn't where he's currently at. He's watching a distant location. It plays itself in front of his eyes almost like a... Like a film reel. And, uh... As he does, he feels that flame licking away at the sides of it. He feels every... segment... of his old world life that was burnt away by that flame. It calls out from his flesh more keenly than ever. The flame that destroyed the world. It stands in front of you. Isaac's body, almost doubling over, becoming more burdened and bestial. Somewhere else in the world, 
in a location that Isaac can only see in his dreams. Cal, you pull your motorcycle up as you feel this place almost call to you. Cold pulling up behind you. What's the matter? What's wrong? I don't know. I just... Oh. Damn. Hmm? Yeah, I kind of recognize that stool. Oh, shit, it's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> he sits down and he's like, Wait, no. This... Yeah. <laughs> Guess I can say my sense of style is timeless now. <laughs> Listen, man, we always knew that that was the case. <laughs> Holy crap, everything's in the same place. He, like, looks down at it. Huh. You... It's a funny thing. Cal, the level of devastation that's implied by the world around and everything that you've encountered up to this point far outstrips what's in this bar. The scorch marks are removed. Segments of the floor are literally gone, never to be repaired, but the bits that are here, the bits that still stand, seem to be intentionally maintained. Someone's been looking after the place. Hmm. None of you wandering around? I mean, beyond I mean, I the... I can't prove there isn't. Yeah, beyond the other you that's currently wandering around, actually? That's kind of yeah. a stupid question. Yeah, no, we have at least one data point, but, uh... No. I think that if I was around here... I mean, when have I not been in the bar? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I gotta ask, is this... You feeling predestined based on this, man? Like, are you feeling any, feeling any doom overcoming you right now? Because, uh, I gotta admit, some level of this is kind of freaky. Cal thinks about that. Cal leans on the bar, and he runs his hands over it, very similar to the one upstairs. Hmm. Well? When I built my place... I laid it out the way I wanted to, not because I felt like I was matching any plan, but because I thought about it and I put the work in. I think that... I'm not gonna worry about it, actually. <laughs> you look at the area around. Yeah, now you're fucking talking, man. <laughs> As a man walks in and takes the same spot he always takes, he sits down at the edge of the bar and, like, leans in. He's like, Uh, probably a little ridiculous to say, get me the usual, right? No, let's see what I got. He's gonna reach into his bag. <laughs> wow, you carry the booze with you. That's, uh, honestly good thinking. Uh, I the mean, director... I don't think you could call a Molotov. No, wait, wrong bottle. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, don't feed me that. No, no, let's see where he's going with this. <laughs> Do I have to tell you not to drink Molotovs? Because, no, that's that makes sense. I feel like, I'm just surprised we haven't had that conversation before. <laughs> I pour whatever the suit needs into the suit. It's got its own needs, Molotov or not. <laughs> Cal hands him a bottle with a rag in the top. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> pours it into the flame tank and it starts circling around and he's like, what the hell? I thought that that was full of, like, flame and stuff. Some parts of it are flame. Some parts of it are water with food coloring. What's your point? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Colt. this man. <laughs> Colt quietly rubs his temples, looks over. So, what are you two doing out in a place like this? I mean, it's my bar. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I crash here sometimes, so I hope you don't mind me taking up floor space. No, uh, I mean, you're a regular already. 
<laughs> the director uh, fluffs up slightly. You're the one that's been keeping the place clean? <clears throat> Aside from the giant mounds of sand and decimation that I assume were, like, a bit much to handle without access to a hardware store. He, uh, he looks out and he's like, for the most part, if you can call this clean. Listen, I just wanted to keep the place more or less in shape. He, I appreciate it. He like, he, like, looks over and nods slightly. Uh, after all, no matter how my bleak things might seem, the voice box actually kicks in and almost speaks in tune with them. Regardless, this place existed, and in the future, will also continue to exist. Repeat it again and again. That in itself can be a beautiful thing as much as it is damning. But I think we need to trust in either direction. Those that we put our faith in. He, uh, he, like, slides his way down, and, uh, he, like, puts a hand on the table. Well, as far as putting all my chips in one corner of the board, I'll have you know that the woman that I'm betting on happens to be the strongest ever. He floats up to his full, <laughs> full height. Yeah, three guesses who that is. <laughs> oh, so what a mystery. So everything on our end should be fine. At this point. Yeah, I'll be real. We were kind of just puttering around because, like, I mean. Objective done, right? Which means it's well, time I mean, to I break mean, out the tech. booze. I mean, time to be <laughs> responsible. <laughs> <laughs> the day you start being responsible is the day I'll actually start getting worried. <laughs> Good. Fear my eventual arrival. <laughs> <laughs> he uh he he relaxes and he's like <clears throat> I don't I don't know if history has has a concept such as side characters but for somebody like me that's actually a role I like to fill. He sits down here and he's like leave it in the hands of someone else. The direct them. <laughs> so <laughs> After our, wow, I hit random and got green. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Molotovs will do that. <laughs> ah, I think I like green flavor. He, uh, he adjusts. <laughs> after our long years of, after our own long years of resistance, it's nice to see the ungrateful youth stepping up and doing their jobs, right? That's, a, you... again, a rhetorical question. <laughs> yeah, was just, you, you remember all the people that work for you right yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah. Remember them? Yeah. Ungrateful louts, the lot of them. <laughs> the ones <laughs> fighting God right now? Yeah, the ones that are literally over there fighting, like, a, who knows what number of things. I, uh, what was it that they used to say back in the day? Uh, it's a... It's a learning e experience. <laughs> How else are you going to prepare for what comes next, right? They'll handle it. I trust them. <sighs> Cold sort of leans in. Yeah. Half my body screaming to run back in there, but at this point, it like looks up at the air. I think we can leave it to the rest of Opia. They're going to do their best. Cal puts a hand on his shoulder. We go where we're needed. Right now, we're not needed in there. So, the least we can do, and he sweeps some dust off the counter, is make sure that there's somewhere to come home to. Yes. And also, I think we can kind of leave it to Isaac, too. The guy is kind of a stick in the mud who honestly spend of his, the rest of his life chasing the promise of an increasingly large mini fridge but <laughs> I think there's still some virtue remaining in him hmm. Cal thinks about the man who know, who knows him and that he does not 
but that one of him did. He tries to think about what kind of person that is. Well, I was friends with him once, so I'll do that me a favor and believe in him. <laughs> the director picks up his Molotov. Cheers. <laughs> Lights the fuse and then pours it into his suit. As That's, the okay, get down. <laughs> leaps over the counter and the flames off. intensify elsewhere in the world. <laughs> Isaac's body almost shakes and stumbles forward. Still imagining that distant bar, he moves his way in. As he looks over at you, you hit me with a car, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Director in the background like, yeah, go get him! <laughs> he stumbles and sort of straightens himself. Everybody, give me a roll to die. You got it, boss. Okay. Isaac's keeping. Trouble. What are you on tonight? Okay. I don't you know go first. who rolls to die or insane right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you want me to start with my attack turn or my buff turn? I think we like both, right? Says <laughs> Seder from his iron cocoon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seder, do you want me to get you out of the... Out of the metal sheets. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it seems the answer truly is always just Buff Willow. Willow you, uh, you get your 3d6. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Argos, you realize in that moment, Fio's still actually grasping your hand and is like. So are you getting a little competitive too? <laughs> <laughs> of course. I'm, I'm just saying. Okay, carry on. <laughs> All right, I have to pick who's the next turn. Oh, you do. Uh, yeah, Fia can go next if she wants to compete with me. Fio uh, is going to compete with you and she's like, okay, Argos, are you going to go in for the big slappy yourself or are you going to assist me? Oh, you need some assistance? I think I could use it, yes. Okay. She... Oh, boy. Okay, Sophia's gonna do something. She, um... Let me grab this. You watch as... Fio holds out a hand, and at her side... You see the armor that she used to wear almost crackle around her. After having obsidian gold forcibly ripped from it, the Pyromancer of Instrumentality, the ex-Pyromancer of Instrumentality, manifests something large that almost drapes around her. It carries in its palm a gigantic sword that remains sheathed at its side. It floats around, sweeps one arm up, and places Fio on that arm. She rests here, as edge of turn, uh, end of eternity, uh, rests in its sheath still. She's like, okay, in this case, I'll wait on you. Just give me the signal. She's gonna, she's going to, uh, roll to die, delay, and set an action. Isaac will roll to do to determine what it is. He has no idea what's happening. The man is, <laughs> the man got hit by a car. <laughs> uh, she passes you the turn, Argos. All right, then. Uh, I'm going to take out single-handed savior's cool interface thing and point it to Isaac and scan him. Ooh, lovely. Okay. 
Give me a uh, give me a roll to do. <clears throat> Immediately, right. you get that. Very lovely. Uh, let me go roll to die. Oh wait, no, you're clashing. The man rolls to do. He looks over at you. Undefinable. However, you get your free scan once per combat. You've marked him with tactics. <laughs> ah, no so color bullets for you though. That's okay. And uh, oh, I have to hand it off. Oh, you you still have an action. You get one free scan per combat. Oh yeah, it's not, that yeah. You said it, and it totally yeah flew over my head. You still get to do things. Oh got a well, flow chart uh, Argos. <laughs> yeah, it says it. Never I did not it. put. I did not actually put the free <laughs> scan on the uh, flow chart. That's my bad. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you get off this time. <laughs> Well then, uh, I'll take out a, uh, a big old hard light sniper rifle and uh, no scope this guy. <laughs> okay, give me a roll to do. That's another clash. Let's go. Okay. You aim the shot at him and ooh, lovely. Uh, you could always be nice to push the roll. Yeah. No, he doesn't need to. Oh. Because best boy's here. The man, entombed in iron fruit roll-up, flits out of existence and appears behind you in a split second. Uh, you watch as Sater's comedy worm-like body floats through the air. He's like, hey, give me a sec, Argos, just picking up speed here. He, vroom, 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 oh, boy. warps through the shadows and then flings himself at Isaac full speed, he is what? going to mark off this ability and add 1d6 to your roll. This is how he's assisting you. <laughs> roll 1d6. <laughs> My god, he's thinking with portals. <laughs> the attack pushes past and you actually manage to do it. Just <laughs> don't explode yourself. <laughs> Cheryl watching Cinder launch himself at Isaac like, oh god. You, he picks up speed and then uh, eventually launches himself off of the side of this pipe and at a borderline terminal velocity, rolls his way across the ground, strikes Isaac in the back for no damage and he stumbles out from treble where Argos, you're like, wow, right open. Bam! <laughs> and you just managed to hit the shot. Argos, uh, you watch Sater skid to a halt, sort of hitting the base of Willow's leg, and just, doom. Thank you. <laughs> good, good, good job. <laughs> you okay, man? Yeah, man, I'm doing awesome. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to get you to, to a hospital after this. <laughs> Is he still, like, all... Oh, yeah, he's he's in a... He's in a, he's in jail. Yeah, no, he's all. Oh, I thought he up. teleported out of it. No, it's coming with him. Unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> I gotta pry this fucking shit off of him. <laughs> the man stops there. Okay, so you shoot Isaac. Now you have a choice. You can. You won the clash. You can ignite to double your damage. And if you look on your handy dandy flowchart, you can actually explode that marker to deal forty six extra damage, which would be doubled by the clash. Argos, this attack can actually dramatically fuck this dude up. Or, you could leave the tactics on there for Fia. Mm. That's and what I want even to leave if you, it for, but... Even if you don't pop the tactics, you can bank the shot off of him by shooting a, a, a tactics-marked individual and bank it onto someone else. So you can... Yeah. <laughs> you can heal Seder and damage him. Seder's <laughs> fine. <laughs> His fruit roll up. <laughs> so <laughs> snug. <laughs> He's been tucked in. <laughs> All right. Um, can I bank the shot off of Isaac and yes. into whatever's uh, confining Seder? Try Ooh, to try to bust him out of that? Off. Yeah. Yes, you can. Um, okay. Uh, so that. give me another roll to do. 
That attack beats a 10. When you're rolling out of range, you need to beat a 10 consistently. It bounces to Seder, heals him. Uh, strikes the object containing him, cracks run through it, and then there's another marker. You can pop the marker on Seder that's already on him, healing him for 46 extra health, or bank the shot again. I, I'm, no, I'm gonna keep that mark on him. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> You're gonna bounce it to somebody else? No, 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 I'm, I'm... Yeah. Just so, letting it end there so the mark stays on him. So here's the thing. Right now, with the way that single-handed savior works is, it can continue to bounce. Bouncing it does not eat the mark. Oh. So you just struck Seder. Even though it specifically yeah. says no infinities. You can't no bounce. Infinites. <laughs> you can't bounce back and forth between two marked people forever. Is is the is the stipulation? If you find a way to be like, I figured out an infinite combo. I go, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> this is my like warning. That. I guess I'll heal Willow as well. Bounces over to Willow, marks her. This is new single-handed savior okay, gameplay. Okay, I see how it works now. Yeah, now you got marks on three people. Excellent. Uh, who do you pass it to? Let's give it to Willow. Willow! All right, Seder. <laughs> you ready for our cool du duel tech? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I am. <laughs> well, it's gonna have to wait. I'm so sorry. She picks up Seder for roll up and is going to hit it hit Isaac with it. <laughs> Are you perhaps tagging Seder as a prop here? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Give me an extra 1d6 for striking with what a, Seder. What a shitty prop. <laughs> How fucking dare you, Ace? Get your ass over here. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Willow just rolls up, picks up the Seder bat, and slams Isaac. He's gonna... 28 versus the 31. Boom! The attack travels and clong hits Isaac in the side of the head. Uh, Treble, you watch as Seder's face passes by yours, emerging from the fruit roll up now, smiling, glimmering in the light. It's beautiful. <laughs> Can I ignite to use a special effect? Uh, yes! I want to what just effect? let Seder out and him to look really cool doing it. <laughs> so you're gonna- okay, okay, ignite your dice to rip this off of Seder. I see. <laughs> Flies free, flips through the air and lands next to you, Argos, is like, uh, gives trouble. Same look. He lands, he's like, huh. Just as planned. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh man, I'm glad you didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy to be getting this side of trouble consistently. <laughs> Trouble's just like, oh, I don't like it, man. You're not goofy enough, Trouble? You can hang <laughs> with the boys, huh? <clears throat> Jeez. <laughs> I can be yeah. goofy. I can be silly. He's killing himself. <laughs> this man is about to die. <laughs> it's not funny. I put a lot of time and energy to keep him from doing that. He's surrounded by doctors. He's fine. <laughs> Seder positions himself here, and he actually looks over to you, Trouble, and you see a serious expression spread to yours for a split second. He's like, hey, this next time I got your back, okay? Mine. Mm-hmm. He nods. All right. And, uh, yep, that's his, uh, that's Willow's go. All right. Uh, I'm going to send it over to... Who didn't go? Uh, Trouble has another go. And, uh, Theo's got a set action that she's going to, she's going to trigger soon. Okay, I'll, I'll let Trouble go. All right, Seder. He, he smiles. He's going to pull out another one of those swords from nothing and wing it in your direction. He, uh, he, he's passing you a 1d6 bonus. Alright. Trouble... Okay. She's going to take a swing at Isaac, but she's going to step into his space 
because he's like exploding yeah. with light and flame. Oh yeah. So it's gonna be a little difficult. But she's going to step into his face and try and hit him. Mm. And as she is tr as she is trying to get this sword to connect with him, she's going to try and use her shadow walking ability to slip under him. Oh. So that Theo can <clears throat> swing in tandem with her. Oh, sick. Okay. Give me a roll to do. Treble! Rolling like a fucking god! Okay. So. This setup happens. You sweep under him and get ready to swing in tandem. Seda runs off in this direction. Does a parkour trick up the wall? Flips and throws his sword. Simultaneously, it travels towards Isaac from an off direction. As, uh, roll me one extra d6. <clears throat> Theo closes in behind and waiting similarly to the, uh, for the signal from Argos, she raises a hand, places it on the side of, uh, of her, well, this floating armor. And you see that same marker appear that you felt empower you recently, Argos. This one, she is going to target onto her armor and she is going to use the golden sword. Show it off. 1d6 bonus to the next roll. Roll to do, clash. And uh, Theo is, she's gonna roll this? Lovely. Um, you watch as she places a hand on the sword and you see her eyes split open for a second. And you come to a horrifying realization in terms of the power that Isaac was demonstrating just moments ago. The armor at Theo's side locks its individual knuckles, treble sweeping under it. And in slow motion, the increased processing speed of your eyes shows you something. To everyone else here, it appears as if Theo leaves End of Eternity in its sheath. But for her, a flash travels through the air and she is subbing that roll out by igniting for a 20. She is going to aim for massive damage on Isaac right now. With a clash and a win, Theo locks that in. It pops the golden sword. She can't ignite further, but the sword flash travels through and the blade slices through Isaac as you watch space almost ripple and distort itself. The man, a look of horror crossing his face, whirls around and it seems like he adequately acknowledges Theo as a threat for the first time in his entire life. She sweeps the sword back and it clicks in place. And it's in this moment that Isaac, that flame still burning and boiling around him, takes his first wound. And when that happens, his control over the flame starts to slip a little bit, actually. Gonna get rid of this one. He gets cut through and he almost touches the place where the cut traveled through him. Wow. Huh. So, this is the girl we tried to shield from all this. He tests his own blood mixed with flame between his fingers. Huh. He comes to a quiet realization. Something that you pick up on. Actually, everyone here, we got the, we got the crowd of empaths here. He picks up on something subtle. The person in front of him, the little girl that he tried to make sure could grow up innocent of this situation, at some point became anything but. He feels almost nostalgic. But that sensation changes to dread as his flame licks its way outwards through the area, it picks up on something that was closing in.
It's a funny sensation for him as he gets his sixth sense screaming something at him. The figure darts forward in an instant and throws her own attack on top of the pile. It sweeps Whoa. down and so Isaac, <laughs> Isaac feels the back of his head suddenly almost the flame collapses backwards as he feels something change near the back of his skull. It's an almost supernatural response. As his flame starts to roil and boil around him, it coalesces towards a singular point. As Riddle Arendite brings her blade down, her eyes focus in. I figured it out. I figured out what's weird about you. She, uh, she like stumbles backwards and she's like, uh, guys? She points at him. There's something standing behind him and he can't see it either. He can't even aim its attacks. He tries to bait you into where it's aiming. You're not fighting one person, you're fighting two. Riddle, as Isaac's body slides back into position, the man feels something. The flame, a towering giant resting over his shoulder, almost seems to appraise the person in front of him. And the sensations it feels in this moment spread through the room. Overwhelming, yet familiar. Something about this person in front of him is making the flame upset in a way that it cannot quantify. But for Isaac, what he sees, he sees a bird a beautiful mountaintop. Isaac feels his entire life snap into focus as beauty skates out in front of his eyes. A synapse fires wrong in the back of his head as the flame tries to rebel. Isaac becomes overwhelmed in a sensation as different chemicals mix within his mind. And he understands something well and truly this life that he spent staring straight ahead. This life that he spent biking day after day to work. He remembers every single petal of the flowers that he used to pass by. He remembers every leaf. And he remembers something key. He remembers life is beautiful and in doing so, his flame whirls around. It sets a burning palm down between itself and the rest of the crew. As Isaac turns on his heel, he looks at Seder directly in the eye and he goes, I get it, man. Yeah, yeah, you do? You really do? Life's beautiful. Life is beautiful. Get me the hell out of here, Isaac yells as uh, Seder's expression, finding comprehension, understanding, he moves forward. I get it, man. Yeah, let's go. Holding his hands out, he sweeps them together, pulling him and those in the surrounding area away into the abyss of his shadow. Riddle pauses. She stares straight ahead. Are you fucking kidding me? Again? She looks around the room. Again. Come. Where's Ace? She stumbles off in this direction, stomping off in the direction of Ace Galatine. Bro. For the, for the rest of you. Dude, you could just take the car. <laughs> Riddle, Riddle definitely freaking there's a moment where that Come shit's happening <laughs> and Riddle sees Treble look at her and go and with a look that says save me from these people and then gets <laughs> <in> the, <hell. laughs> the rest of you 
you feel a rush and you feel the open air catch you on either side of your head as you fall a great distance in a location that seems all too familiar. Uh, Argos, I'm spawning you first. You are uh, headed towards the fucking ground right now. What do you do? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Not <a good> classic. <laughs> uh, I, I contemplate. Like, the, the healing bomb worked yeah. once. But now I know that blowing up hurts single-handed savior. You just remember her crying and you're like, do it. That's not okay. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to attempt? <laughs> All right. I'm going to use Fate Weaver and shoot out threads in all directions, connecting Ooh. to the highest things that I can. Argos, give me a roll to do. Lovely. You reach the successes. You fire Fate Weaver in every direction. It carries your flame, and you create a web in the air as immediately below you. You feel your flame connecting different strands of this web all together, forming a singular hole. And up above it, you don't fall through because it almost seems to hum with your ESP subconsciously. Argos, you create a platform to stand on as Riddle did all those years ago. <laughs> all those many, many decades <laughs> as you thump into the top of this and uh, a mixture of not only your web, but your ESP keeps you floating in the area. And over here, you see someone else place a similar area down right here as she floats over here, along with... Hey, Willow, I got a question. Yeah? Do you want to prove the audience wrong right now? Or not the audience, do you want to prove your fellow players wrong? Hey, Willow, you're falling a great distance, what do you do? I'm flying! <laughs> My wings are yeah. 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 You forgot you, ha you yeah. forgot you had wings until I brought it up, okay? Don't lie to me. <laughs> Willow buzzes off in this direction. <laughs> Switching down with her wings on top of this barrier and that, uh, uh, treble. Yeah. I assume you're the one who grabbed Seder from plummeting to his doom. Yes. <laughs> you grab your clown. <laughs> You guys see trouble fucking tackle him. Seder <laughs> is like, Seder falling through the air is like, haha, yeah, and then trouble's like, <laughs> on him, holding him in the middle of a gravity well as Isaac floats between the rest of you, the rest of Fuse City animating the backdrop. He looks around. I gotta say, prettier night. Oh. He, fl he flutters in place. We're back on the surface. Actually, this is good. Treble looks over to you, Argos, and she goes, There's something I didn't get a chance to tell you because we kind of jumped right into the fighting. <laughs> yeah. Um, it might be a bit much right now, but I actually oh. need you to start streaming. <laughs> You need me to start streaming, did you say? Yeah. <laughs> Dice is trying to do a thing, and if you don't stream us fighting this guy, uh, we're going to be branded traitors that worked with the demons. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... And, and okay, now that we're infused, now that we're infused, you don't have to worry about all the derelict burn. <laughs> yeah, just the... Uh... Burn from looking at this guy, maybe. Oh, well. <laughs> sort of like, filtered I'm, I'm not as capable as my sister, but I will do my best to censor this. 
Thank you. Hey, everybody, we're <laughs> live. <laughs> Chat, you know what time it is. <laughs> there we go. Hold on. I gotta. Imagine I gotta. being an Argos fan, and he goes live for the first time in a while. Like, in, like, three days. Like, he's been suspiciously missing for, like, a week. He goes live for the first time in a while, and it's an unscheduled, <laughs> unplanned stream. And you log in, and it's him floating above Fuse City in, like, a weird electric purple light, while Willow Wisp, the former number one opiate <laughs> agent, is flying above a weird golden light with a woman who's... It hurts to look at a little bit. <laughs> and then Seder, the guy from Geist that everyone knows, is being held by a different mysterious woman on the other <laughs> side. And there's just a fucking no. purple anomaly in the middle. No, you, you say that's weird. Uh, that's just a normal Germa stream. <laughs> <laughs> For Argos, uh, the signal goes out. And again, I don't know if uh, it's been a while since we've done this. You are free to respond to chat as if they're actually here. Um, I display at the center of the city where this is. <laughs> Yo, what's the girl's try the act account? <laughs> <laughs> cool it. Chat's <laughs> perspective the last time they saw Argos was news that he had died. <laughs> <laughs> so be sure to check out my welcome back merch. <laughs> this is where you guys are. All around the city. Uh, Sarah's so like, uh, okay. Uh, there's a demon up there. Hey, hey, boss. Hey, boss. Oh, shit, he's streaming. Uh, <laughs> down here. Uh, up here, Root's like, oh, shit, I gotta get in on that. Pixie like, no, no, you're staying. Shush, shush. Glock, glock. <laughs> she shoots Ruth a few times, boosting her back up. Everyone from the area is like, <clears throat> uh, serve coming through like, all of the members of Opia that are in the surrounding area have a question, Argus. Should they move to support you or cheer you on from where they are? You know what? I can use some cheers. <laughs> uh, over here, uh, Justice like would also be uh, ready with some sniper rifles. <laughs> Pixie, uh, Pixie's like, consider me your safety net. If anyone falls off of the area above, I will shoot them back to hell. <laughs> <laughs> A woman after my own heart. <laughs> I learned from the best. <laughs> she. Uh, Pixie will get herself in position, but for the rest of them, one by one, everybody starts to tune into the stream, displaying not only what, what's happening, but the combat that's taking place in the sky. Over here. <laughs> Isaac has a somewhat strange reaction to what's happening. He, uh, he looks around at each of you, and I'm going to roll for him. <clears throat> hey, Argos. Mm -hmm. Can you give me a roll to die and then a roll to do for, for, for stream quality? That's <laughs> Mike dead. I see a chat. Yo, who's <laughs> the purple dude? <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Oh shit! Mike just in the corner, her phone pulled up, watching. Yeah, I was about. Oh <laughs> shit! Uh, Isaac pauses as uh, he looks around, and his flame starts to flare slightly. It pops and hisses as he feels the presence of a multitude of eyes on him. Down here. So, basically, Mike has basically her, like, comms pulled up and is just showing this to you guys. Um, Whoa. functionally speaking, uh, I need to moderate this. I still need to do, do my job. So, like, take five? <laughs> Should I help him? Should I, Simona looks over at the queen, like, I, the, sh I, she's a stranger. Should I, should I be there? I don't think I can make it to the surface that quickly. 
the queen thinks, and she's like, I think Isaac could use somebody cheering for him right now. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> okay, okay. Fun fundamentally speaking, uh, like, I guess putting serve in charge of the mods, it's like dangerous because he really likes to ban people. God, he really likes to ban people. Okay, I got to slap away mod privileges from him. Okay, he's throwing a fit. <laughs> like sitting on the floor and she's like, ah, good. You see, it's funny. Mike's expression has been so dour, set and serious this entire time, but she plops in the middle of the floor, gets back to moderating. And for the first time you see her actually relax. Uh, so, yeah, like, a quick rundown of what's happening. Um, Argos live streams all the battles against you guys, and wait, I think you guys already know this. <laughs> she, like, looks over. The queen's like, no, no, why don't you explain it to me again from your perspective? <laughs> Up here. <clears throat> Ooh, no, actually. <clears throat> Down here. <clears throat> All of these people, comms pulled up, are fucking cheering. Director's like, and this, this is why you always bet on Willow Wisp. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I get it, man. I understand. You don't, you're like a proud parent. <laughs> he like, he's like, look, tactically Again, speaking. Scorching hot take. <laughs> Tactically speaking, she has every advantage. Strong muscles, wings. Yeah. <laughs> the end of the list, huh? Okay, cool. Uh, is is this always like a fucking sporting event? Colt uh, whispers over. Okay, uh, sure. I guess I'm rooting for like, uh, go Sater, my fellow prison buddy. <laughs> I'm sure he's doing great. Oh, Treble hasn't pinned to the fucking ground. <laughs> yeah, that guy's like he's tripping balls. Colt, uh, uh, Treble, you get a message from, uh, Colt that says, I'm sorry about him. <laughs> <laughs> Treble said I was his keeper before you were. <laughs> and back at base. These guys. <laughs> Door goes, we got a hype train. Like <laughs> <laughs> in the chat, like we we have we've gotten a hype train <laughs> over here. <laughs> Uh, these three actually gather up. <laughs> Verona, on her way back from replacing Ace's blood, is like, oh, okay, <laughs> they started streaming. Good. Uh, Jean's like, yes, and now at this point, there's nothing left to do but sit back and watch the fireworks. Or like, I want to fucking get in on that, man. Actually, do you think Charybdis needs help over at the big tree? Maybe I'll head in that direction. No, you're fucking not. Sit down and watch your stream. <laughs> <laughs> And... Oh, where's Oblis Jen Rip? <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> Back here. Isaac comes to a realization based on the format, based on everything that's happening. Right now, no way around it. He's gotta be the villain. Seeing out all, all of your United ESP bubbles. He sort of floats up, looks at the area around, and he's like, Huh. You know what I said before about how there'd be no hard feelings if you took me down? You're I think not going to say yes hard feelings now, are you? <laughs> he pauses, takes his backsies, and then he's going to whirl his hand in this direction and aim at the two of you. Trouble, roll to die, he's aiming for Seder. <laughs> of course. Great. <laughs> okay. What to do? Can I oh, defend oh, him? Yes, you you can. Oh my god. Trouble, tell me how you defend Seder from this blast of energy that goes in that direction. Well, she's still holding one of his swords, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> I think that she's literally like apparently has sit her pinned to the ground because she was trying yeah. to save him. And then <laughs> just sees Isaac turn and go, takes these vaccines and start trying to fucking blast them, and she just fucking lifts the sword up and tries to deflect it away from him. Like, Boom. oh my god. <laughs> he rolls around. Willow, roll to die for me. <laughs> oh. Alright. And? Tater in one hand, sword in the other. <laughs> Willow, you feel an attack traveling in your direction. He, uh... You watch as that flame starts to split and pull off from himself. He's gonna try to use Cyburner. Um, and... He aims the shot at you, snaps his fingers, and a pure flame erupts on all sides of you. And then you feel uh, Theo's entire expression light up. Don't worry, I've got you supported on this end. She's going to hit you with the golden shield. She encourages you to go in deep. She's like, leave the support to me. I think I got the point across, at least for now. One good slash might have woken him up somewhat, but it seems like all of those waiting and pressing eyes on him are really sapping him out of things. Why don't you go and wake him the rest of the way up? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'll need him awake for this one. <laughs> Down here, Argos. Roll to die for me. Love to see it. You! Oh, uh, roll to do. Oh. Argos! You watch as Isaac darts forwards and stream witnesses something. Like a comet streak through the sky. The man ignites and you see wings of flame burst behind him. From the camera's perspective, from chat's perspective, they see this meteor <laughs> headed straight towards them. It fills the sky. Green, and then for 0 0.5 seconds, stream offline. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, take a break. <laughs> I love Dude. chat replicating a real chat. Oh, treble, de thing. treble defending Seder, and then like three people in chat, like, are they dating? <laughs> <laughs> The, the real thing is Argos like going. That. I wish Everyone that take me. a break, refresh water. Tiny, uh, Jackson, Roma, that was wonderful. That was that was your segment of the session. We'll pick up with that next time. I, I think uh, the most accurate thing was when they were like, the stream turns on and they go, where's Ace? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's fucking Ace's stream. I, I love the idea of Argos being announced dead then going i'm not dead and then going live randomly in the middle of the sky in the middle of a fucking combat yeah. the I real think argonauts another, I think another, are used to this shit i also think another like very realistic part of chat is when chat literally just got completely sidetracked from what was happening in real time to talk about mike and and yeah. to be like we love mike 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 yeah <laughs> so Unreal. true This is a fun fight. Yeah. Everybody's so confused by the purple guy. <laughs> <laughs> we already have a bunch of purples. Which one is he? Someone said, is he Mike's dad? <laughs> oh, bro, imagine. We'd live in a very different timeline. The timeline where Stefano and Mike are siblings. Chat is good at pretending to be chat. I love that it. Experience. The role you were born to play. <laughs> it's one of my favorite parts of when Argo starts streaming. Yeah, I missed that. Trouble heard, yeah, Geist is doing like a counter op to make us look like treasonous bitches, and she went, I know how to solve this problem. I gotta die. I gotta die for that. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some water now that you say. I'm back. Chat, you having a good time? Okay. You having a fun time? Chat, are you locked in? 
We're gonna need you to be locked in. We're gonna need you to be locked in for the remainder of this stream. So yeah, next time when we pick up with uh, Argos, get ready. Uh, we're in we're in full on streamer gimmick again for the remainder of the Isaac fight. <laughs> Aloha's not here, so I'm going to leap on the chance to give a question to YouTube. What would your username be as an Argonaut? Oh, that's a good one. Hmm. Leaning out my window with a loaded sniper rifle about to save Arg Nasty. <laughs> <laughs> they can't stop us all. <laughs> it's not a joke about it's a Dakota, but we will listen. <laughs> Holy shit. I, this is like my favorite bit. I love it so much. I'm back. Welcome back. <laughs> Literally stream sniping Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> Holy god, shit. Dude. Oh god, I love it so much. Can't believe you asked the leech off a larger streamer for Cloud Grow. That's kind of cringe. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just like, I get it. He used to be the strongest desperate, but I think now he's like washed, bro. Like, how old is he? Like, 26, bro? Like, <laughs> that's ancient. <laughs> washed Esper? Washed Esper, bro. I'm not, when, I'm not washed. I'm not washed. Like, as I don't, you get I don't older, what does that mean? Esper even? Tournament. As, yeah, as you get stop older, making up words and just saying them. As you get older, you're, we all know your worldview kind of fades a bit. All I'm saying. I'm, I'm just as hip right now. I Listen, my friend owns a motorcycle. Shut the uh, fuck up. That's not, that's, not, that's not very skibbity toilet of you, bro. <laughs> what did you do? Has to spell on me, you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I gotta, I gotta double check my outline. <clears throat> yep. I'm gonna take a slightly longer break than usual, just to like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Get well, into you're it. 26. Why do you think I'm making that joke? <laughs> Esports players wash up when they're like 22, bro. <laughs> That's ancient. <laughs> You know what isn't ancient? Staring at a fucking lake. <laughs> sure, dude. You gotta age into that, man. You're, you're just not ready for the subtleties of it. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay. Hey, Tiny. Oh, right. Now I need to remember what I need to prep. That's hey. very funny. Hey, Tiny. He's not here. No. No. Jackson he utterly refuses. <laughs> you fuck with skibbity, skibbity toilet, bro. <laughs> you say that to me again, I'm gonna smack you upside the face. <laughs> well, don't burn me with a good time. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Isaac is Germa. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even know what that means. Is that Germa? Like germs? Like I'm not infected? I guess I am infected. Shit, maybe I am Germa. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just viciously I'm defending myself against my most vicious critics. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, apparently they're getting my ass because apparently I don't fuck with skibbity toilet. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't fuck with skibbity toilet, Roma. That's <sighs> um, it's over. <laughs> I'm not washed. He just keeps talking in tongues. Malding. I, I don't understand <laughs> what, what are you this saying. Means. Yeah, but, I don't get it, man. Get best. out of here. <laughs> but, but I'm your number one fan. Thank <laughs> you, God. He doesn't care about, about you, no matter how many super chats you give him. <laughs> <laughs> Stefano, Isaac, they're saying you're cringe. Okay. Uh, <laughs> It's not like good or bad. Bad, it's really bad. What? Even I know that it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> Gotta turn the stream off. Stefano, they're calling your, they're calling your dead cringe on Twitch. Damn. Oh uh, God, we're never gonna recover from bro, this. Bro, you're not even, you're not even Pog champ, dude. You're, you're fucking weird. Okay, so you started saying a word and then just gave up on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think he died from burn. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Hashtag cancel purple guy. <laughs> what is there to can- What do you mean? Stop. <laughs> Isaac defending himself in the chat RP is my favorite. All right. I don't- I don't like having to do this, but chat, we're gonna have to ratio this guy. <laughs> what is that? Oh, oh no, I've heard about that. <laughs> you can get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Prepping that. Prepping this. <clears throat> that scene, that scene, that scene. Okay. Time to change my mode. <laughs> Time to change tracks. Time to stop thinking about skibbity toilet. It's time to fucking <laughs> lock in. Uh, reflection in bio. Fuck in. Reflection in <laughs> bio. <laughs> Things that Theo would say utterly oblivious. <laughs> Gravity well, I'm sending your ass to try it. Uh, it's a blessing. You gotta love the internet, right? No. Right? <laughs> Everyone like. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't so, know. Yeah. Oh, so oh, I don't know about that, man. Oh, I should uh, refill my water because I will blow my fucking voice out. Whoa. Yeah, everybody got their water refilled. Did everybody. Yeah, I got. I got more water. Into the skibbity toilet. Well, I mean, you can, you can, you can go, you can go get some water during my scenes, Tiny. Okay, you got my yeah, permission. That's what I'll say. Yeah, I gotta do what I'm saying. <laughs> Duh, fucking Willow, like, fucking materializing wings out of nowhere, dude. That's crazy. Materializing? <laughs> I used it in hey! episode one. You used, oh shit, dude. You used it in episode one. Yeah, I fucking so Goku <laughs> turned into a monkey episode one, too, and see where that went, huh? Oh my god. Everyone <laughs> knows the pilot doesn't beautiful. count. Trouble thinks life is beautiful. She thinks that Seder is self-immolating and she wants him to stop doing that. And these things are not mutually exclusive. Wait, Treble thinks Sater's life is beautiful? He's regressing. Life is, is she gonna see the images? Are you gonna see are you gonna see the Dude, stuff? I have you to see, see them Mike? every time that fucking Seder has yeah, to see them did. because I have fucking oh. song of the heart, dude. Unfortunately, Argos oh my God, you share a Shutterstock account. Listen, Argos also <laughs> Argos also has this for opium members. He he saw the yeah, market too. You, yeah, you 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 have this specifically for other members right. of Opia, so I'm not the only one sitting you the fucking the mountains. It's you witness the fucking ads. groundhog. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally like four empaths sitting in a room with Isaac and Sater, and it's like, oh my god, <laughs> hell on earth. <laughs> <laughs> Who That's... needs weed? This shit is free. <laughs> Listen, life is beautiful, guys. Anyway, um, <laughs> on to uh, on to the next part of the. Uh... That man has a head injury. <laughs> that, oh, well. man's, that man's life partner just died. I hit this button. <laughs> throws up blood. Hi, it's time for abrupt tone shift. Um, okay. The Golden Knight. Pulled himself up. He rests back to this large, towering segment of the derelict that fell off years ago and allows his armor to slowly repair itself. Obsidian gold is a living thing that circulates flame, much like humans do within its own body. This keeps the flame that he identifies as himself static. It keeps it together, it keeps it strong, it keeps it coherent. It stops it from slipping away or changing shape. When the suit's damaged, he should be losing parts of himself, but one of the large advantages of obsidian gold being repurposed into his pyromancer suit is it maintains his flame perfectly. It maintains his flame in its own cocoon, separate from his body. And yet, in this moment, a body now rests inside of the inside of the pyromancer suit. A man touches down next to him, gentle as a breeze. Oh, so it was you down here. 
the Golden Knight almost starts in place. Yeah, uh, sorry, I got hit pretty bad. I see. Well, you are expected. Currently, the sixth Pyromancer is doing battle with the agents of Opia and Exulansis. Your services are required. GK slowly stands. No, probably isn't an option, huh? Eternity goes quiet, allowing the question to answer itself. GK looks over Eternity's body. There is a marked hole in his side, clearly blown through by something incredibly strong. And if you didn't know better, there are singe marks around the edges of his hair. Likely the impact point of a meteor that you stalled him under for an adequate period of time. Oh. Uh, GK realizes something. This man is probably not in the state that he's usually in. Turns. I'll get to work then. Eternity places a hand on the GK's shoulder. Seeing all of the Opia ants running to and fro has conjured a specific image in my mind. My friend, have you ever heard of a game called chess? GK stops. Uh, ch chess. Y yeah. Yeah. It's kind of ass. Chess is a fascinating thing. Every world, it is invented again with a slightly different rule set. Chess 12, as we can call it, is a miserable game. However, it is an astounding, astoundingly regular event in the universe that someone invents a board game uh, so utterly miserable that people find themselves attracted to it regardless. Yeah? He sort of strains under Eternity's grasp, which does not move. Chess is meant to represent the movements of armies. But in this case, I believe you and one of the men walking deeper into my derelict are armies unto yourselves. Mm. Do me a favor. I'm going to borrow some flame. Entertain the metaphor for me. The grip tightens. The GK feels the suit straining. I want distraction from the misery that has been this day. The GK wants to say something. Even in a moment like this, he'd leave the queen undefended. Is he that cocky? That confident in her? Or is there something else happening? And as he stares into those pale eyes, he shakes his head. Doesn't matter either way. <sighs> a flare moves its way down the pipe of the GK's suit. Okay. Sure. You'll have your chess game. Can you let go of me? Hmm. Closes his eyes. Or at least as the individual, as the GK's mind starts racing. He knows where he's headed. At least for the moment. He has no small amount of confidence that the person he's headed towards will be able to figure out what he has cooking in the back of his mind. However, for that person, to the derelict meeting room. No. This one. <laughs> uh, Ace is you... already, already behind the bar. Yeah. <laughs> you two are waiting here. 
Uh, Sikas are like, <clears throat> yeah, let's break into the good stuff. You know yeah, what the good that's... stuff is, right? I don't really. Oh, yeah, there's I'm like not some... really super familiar with there's what the good like, stuff is. There's some like wine here with a sign that says "Do not touch." So this must be the best thing, right? That must be the best thing in there. Yeah, grab some for me. <laughs> yeah, it... He just like tosses a bottle over. Seagazer catches it. <laughs> later, call around from the edge, like Nectar said, not to touch the wine. Oh. Do that we... means it's the good stuff. I'm saying it because I'm obligated. I'm not doing <laughs> I mean, we could sneak you some if it. you want. I'm gonna be real. I need to focus on doing this, or I would say yes. <laughs> she says that she's like she's like concentrating on maintaining the different doors as people are going in and out of yeah. them. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, that's uh, fair. See, guys, sir. Uh, like starts to uncork the bottle as Say walks Ace. back over. Ace leans <laughs> over and uses the gazer's horn to uncork a different bottle. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, hey, hey, watch it. It's probably fragile. I mean, I, okay. I mean, I, I banged it on a few door frames a few times and it didn't break, so maybe it's not that fragile. Okay, yeah, go for it. Actually, Actually if it was fragile, then, like, riddles would have broke, like, ages ago, probably. Yeah, th throw me a beer. I want to try. <laughs> okay, uh... Uh, they have the Argo stream up. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Just tosses one over, over to Seagazer. Seagazer takes the beer, puts it on the counter, and then, uh, headbutts it like a ram, impaling it on top of it, and she's like... Whoa, nice! And then it uh, dribbles down over her, and she's like, less, less nice, actually. No. You watch as Astral Sea picks itself up all around Seagazer, burning it away off of her. Yeah, I don't want to live with the beer smell, actually. <laughs> I, well, we're not here to just like sit around. Uh, it's just kind of hops back over the table. <laughs> yes, I have, I have completed my mission on my end. <laughs> and what was your mission? I had to retrieve all of the snacks that I was forbidden from, from the, uh, from Stefano's vault. I, uh, good, good, good for you. Okay, that's, that's what you were doing in there? Yes. Would you guys like some? Sigazer so pauses. She looks over and say, I don't know, I just get a metaphysical sensation that something bad will happen if I do that. You... In character, uh, in character, your gut tells you something bad. Out of character, you see the Stefano marker resting oh, yeah. above, uh, Say's head. That's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, it's, it's like, we're not, like, complete enemies, so it's, like, a little rude to, like, you know, grab stuff, but, like, also, like, you know, it's, it's for the best. <laughs> the door's already open. <laughs> is the car in there? The car is in there. <laughs> Thank God. Oh, now, I thought Vinter hit you guys with that. I mean, he probably parked it right back up. <laughs> Vinter has his own automobile. <laughs> oh. You. Are you guys hopping in the fucking car? <laughs> I, I, yeah. So, like, <laughs> wait, you said Vinter has his own automobile. Is this not Vinter's? I do not believe this one is Venter's. Do you wish me to lick it? I ch sure. Why not? <laughs> Say moves over. She licks the side of the car. Interesting. Extremely fascinating. This is, and I believe, oh, very fascinating. This is Compulsion's quote hot rod. It was granted to her as a gift. Oh yeah, we're definitely stealing this thing, right? <laughs> I mean, it's only fair. It's only fair. <laughs> Say, say, hand me that sword. I'm gonna hotwire this thing. <laughs> say, hands you a sword as uh, you, you say, hands you her sword as you use it to express your authority <laughs> over the automobile in front of you. <laughs> Just to double check really quick. Yeah. You are driving a car through yes. the halls of the derelict <laughs> uh, while hey, drinking. Steady. Yes. What? <laughs> no, David. For your meter. Ace. Ace, give me a roll to. Ace, give me a roll to do. This is. This is the. Uh, this is the moment that we discover how effective this is. Oh, so it that's is uh, the most... twenty-seven. Mine was my thing was hidden again. Let me. 
Oh, uh, yeah, the, do, uh, do, yeah, uh, oh, it, I, I oh, got 27. 27, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I see. Okay, okay. Here's how this goes. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna cut the scene away for a sec. We're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> God bless you. Okay. <clears throat> I've always wanted to steal this car. I, I, see, I saw it like 20 episodes ago and I was like, damn, I want to steal that car so bad. It's time. Okay, I gotta set something up really fast. So how careful are you being as you drive this car through the derelict? I mean, I'm not slamming it against walls or anything. Like, I, I'm like, I don't want to damage it. It's a nice car. Like... <laughs> Of if you are following proper guest etiquette, and if I need to get you the sauce, I, 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 I mean, is there proper stealing e guest? Stealing the wine is fine. Stealing the car is fine. Skin marks all across the floor that mm. I have to mop and clean. I don't know about this, guys. Look, I, it's I, I'm not skid marking yet. Yeah, so be careful. Just know that if you start leaving skin marks. I'm sorry, I'm I'm finding this car asset. It's very important for the future. I love yeah. Helena. Is Why didn't she grab it like, beforehand? She's, she's, trying to, she's trying to mediate all of the like doors and stuff. She hears you guys drinking, and she's like, "I'm just telling you the thing that Nectar told me." And then she then she hears you start up a car and start driving, and she's like, "I." None I, of my business. That ain't none of my business. Look, this car was built upon the 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 like the torture of my aces. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I am going to drive it. Uh, if this car <laughs> is Sun Shadow, so be it. I don't care. That, that's not as fun. Dude, imagine compulsion like nah, a skeleton foiled again. You correctly guessed my sick demonic arm. <laughs> I, you wonder why I called it a hot rod. <laughs> she is a, she is like ranger adjacent. She's she ranger adjacent. Car. She'd have a fucking car. Literally, this is a gift. This was a gift, man. I mean, hey man. Think about what you're fucking doing, dude. Yeah, maybe, maybe she should have thought about that before possessing me. Uh, no, not even once. Dude, dude, I do not know where this fucking car asset is. You can just grab a different car asset. It's gonna be fine. <sighs> but this one has I, a cool dragon on the I side. I know it has it. a cool dragon on it, but like, you the know. The cool dragon is very I'm surprised important. you that's, didn't that's like okay. already have the car like loaded up. Somehow I didn't expect expect you to Somehow do this. I overlooked it, I, man. I, every time I yeah, saw that car, through the cracks. Yeah. every time I yeah. saw this car, Jay, I would DM you like, hey, okay. I want to steal this car. Okay, 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 okay. So the car that I'm going to give you is not the car that we just saw. I need you to use everyone. This is a game about imagination. I need you to demonstrate it. I'm showing it on the screen. Yeah. This car has a minigun on top of it. The car that Ace is piloting does not have a minigun on top of it, but uh, yeah, that's yeah, the one. That's that's the that's your... Yeah, that's the dragon. This is representative. Okay, okay. Thank you. Is Say riding <laughs> on top of the car? I mean, I don't she know how many seats it is. Isn't the other car com isn't the other car convertible, or am I crazy? <laughs> <laughs> you uh. You're driving it through the derelict. You're I driving it through the derelict. You're doing, you're doing an, you're doing an okay job. Genuinely, you got a twenty-seven. Um, not terrible. I mean, Jesus. if you can't drive it through the derelict, how did one Victor drive through the derelict and two the car get there? <laughs> Listen, you know what? You can, fair enough. You can drive through the derelict with enough determination. And that's that's what we have. Look, if there's any space that I can't get through, I can just shoot Astral Sea, drive the car through the Astral Sea, and pop out. So you're driving your fucking teleporting car? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I, I understand the situation fully. Uh, TTRPGs is a is a yeah. place where you can do whatever you want, chat, okay? Yeah, if that means Embrace stealing a car, uh, it, uh, I'm drinking and driving in the game, not a real life. That's do not, do not emulate this behavior. We are lucky that we are not the ones streaming to the populace at large. <laughs> Goodness. I'm uh, I'm DMing you something, uh, Mask, that uh, if you could do that for me, that'd be great. You got a lot of time. 
Um, but if you could do that favor for me, uh, much appreciated. You ever realize you forgot to upload an asset? That's me right now. Okay. So. On it. Thank you so much. You are you are the absolute best. Can he even get drunk? I don't know, man. He has a hole in his chest, kind of. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, genuinely, the answer is no. <laughs> You're just doing this to drink their fucking wine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Boy, I sure hope Ace Galatine isn't drunk driving in hell right now. <laughs> <laughs> he your, was your famous problematic junk drunk uh, drive in hell. I dude, this is truly a problematic fave. <laughs> okay. So Oh, I gotta erase the U. Clearly driving indoors. <laughs> <laughs> One man strides his way. I guess he isn't drunk. He can't get drunk. He's drinking and driving, which is, uh, it just, it is just as bad, Ace. It is just as bad. Let me play this. <laughs> Here. In the arena we almost didn't use. One man strides towards the middle of it. He places his foot on one end of the stairs and he works his way up, traveling towards the middle of this grand board set out in front of him. He pauses in his position and waits. Apparently, a lot of the invaders were just violently ejected from the derelict. As such, it's important for him now to stop this wave. To stop a skeleton. And as he poses himself there, he pulls out that sword, a construction of blown glass again. Flame dances inside of it. And as he stares down at the blade, he reminisces of a distant time. He thinks back on <clears throat> the state of how things were. He thinks back on Somebody walks forward, waving a hand. You guys sure you're headed out that way? Like, seems like a mistake to me, to be honest. Luke lightly waves a hand. Yeah, nothing left for us back in this direction. Honestly, I expected you to run off too. Didn't think you'd throw in with the machinists. Want bandit life not good enough for you? I wasn't a bandit, necessarily. <sighs> Riddle size. Look, good luck out there. Saving people's hard. All of us can't be dealing with the big disasters. Some of us have to deal with the larger ones. If you're out there doing this, then that means we can be out there doing our thing. I'm sure that, um, I'm sure everything's gonna pan out and you're keeping the world that we, um, you're keeping the world that we want to come back to safe. So we can deal with the more frightening aspects of things. You can stop trying to comfort me. I know what I'm doing. I'm running away. I recognize that. He, um, packs his bag as the rest of the, um... As the rest of this group of survivors sets to rescuing people outside the purview of the machinists, he, um, sort of, like, strings his hair. I don't think I can go on. Everyone else is shattering and breaking back there. With... Blades, he pauses, looking over at the man that would become Nine. Blades, death, um, 
everything's sort of coming apart at the seams. Oh, we're gonna make a difference out here. In whatever way we can. He offers a soft smile, so you can stop trying to comfort me. I know how much of a coward I am. Riddle's expression sort of softens. Okay. In that case, so he walks forward. Happy trails, I guess. Save a lot of people for us too, okay? Yeah. To my best. His expression softens as something pulls him free of his flashback. <laughs> Memory of the truck starting as they drove away into the dunes. Hmm. Didn't sound quite like that, though. From the down the way. Something trundles its way in. An equal and opposite. Over here. I guess it's a funny sensation. You feel yourself almost called back to a different segment of your life. Just recently. Staring out over the dunes, you pull yourself over a high mountain. <clears throat> hopping. From one log to another. Someone clinging to your back. You hop! Pull yourself free. Sunset dancing in front of you. As she like, sort of taps your shoulder just like... Okay, horses are just up ahead. Keep moving. Hop. <laughs> I'm not a horse, okay? <laughs> I mean, obviously, if you were a horse, she pauses. Huh. Is it weird to say I would prefer this? Is it weird to prefer, prefer horses to people? Uh, Hop. I, I think that makes you normal. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? That <laughs> sword from the back leaps again and lands. What? People are complicated. People are going to eventually betray you. They're motivated by so many different things. And God, can they not stop dying? Horses Pop are easy again. to read. And a good horse never dies. <laughs> sword in the background like, I'm going to be real. I don't necessarily get it. That hasn't been my experience, but I guess you two are the experts. He <laughs> jumps over again <laughs> as you leap. You crest the sunset, moving in a different life, yet still one that is your own. Into the distance, gravity pulling away from your body. You enjoy the sensation of floating freedom. Something that laughter always did love. It spreads through your mechanical body, as natural as blood, to think a feeling could work like um to feeling to think a feeling could work like breath. Revitalizing the body, driving you forwards. That inertia, that sensation of flight. You feel it again. You feel it more keenly than ever, as your car hits the side of this staircase, banks into the air, wheels sideways through it, and you almost see that sunset again, as the GK loudly yells, Ace? What the fuck? <laughs> and the car slams into him. <laughs> Uh, hey, Ace, give me a roll to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's a 15. That's a, that's a solid 15. Do me a favor, hit the whisper button for me. Oh, is am I still private? Uh, wait, 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 let me see. Oh, no, I can see it, I can see it. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's 15. GK, will roll to defend. Uh, tag the prop, uh, add 2d6 to it. Uh, ignite, tag prop, I... <clears throat> you don't need to ignite, you're fine. Okay. The benefits you, you of drunk puddle. driving. <laughs> what a problematic game we run. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> Stop.
Stop that. Stop that. Put it down. Boom! The attack hits him as the car fucking explodes. <laughs> you say is sent flying away. She skids on her face into the distance. Seekers her flips and lands like, whoa, 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 whoa. And you and the Golden Knights square up one to the other. Uh, my, Ace, give me a roll to do. My fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> Ace, in that split second, you pull yourself free from your car. If this was a horse, it wouldn't have exploded. <laughs> you stand up, and the GK has a split second where he brushes up next to you. For the crit 20, I'm going to show this to you immediately. Uh, this is the one instance that I'm going to break my own rule and actually DM something to you, Aloha. You get the context, play along. He, um, he brushes up next to you. And there is a crack running along the side of his mask. He actually pulls it down for a split second, and you see a shock of pink hair descend over his face. He flashes you a smile. <laughs> and whispers, play along, as he stumbles back in the other direction. You son of a bitch! <laughs> what, you didn't the expect the old car trick? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, how the hell did you even get a car this deep in the derelict? The, um, <clears throat> say, slowly strains herself, and she's like, <clears throat> as one of my first experiences on automobile travel, that was horrifying. I never want to experience that again. So you guys are like, eh, you probably, you get used to it, I think. Um, she sets herself upright as you feel... You feel a snap, and again, for the crit 20, I'm going to whisper something to you. Uh, or he's going to whisper something to you. Uh, he sort of, like, pitches his head in the direction. He's watching. I don't know from where. And all, uh, all around the area, lines of tremendous chess pieces descend on either side of this grand board. You touch down and feel yourself surrounded on either side. Another crack in the air. The GK steadies himself and he's like, I've always had a bone to pick with you, you bastard. So square up. Come on. Hit me with your best. Uh, by the way, do I heal the fool, by the way? Because, uh, Veronica? Uh, hit, me, hit the recover button. Yeah, hit the recover uh, button. Uh, you huh? get, you get your, uh, wound back. Yeah, yeah, I get my wound back and then I recover. And then, uh, you hit the recover. If you roll high, if you roll good, 27. add 27. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 27. Oh. Oh, yeah. nice. Okay, you're four over. Yeah, go to, uh, go to 70. Yep. So. Okay. He just kind of looks around. A chessboard. He nods. <laughs> kind of tacky, isn't it? Listen, I told him that the game was garbage, but apparently it has more significance to people like him. So, I post the setting rules of this. Chess 12. Chess 12 is the monopoly of this reality. It is a very straightforward game. All of the pieces can simply do one thing. They can move one space forward and attack into that singular space. Every piece works exactly the same. They all do the same thing. The game ends when the king is taken. Very straightforward, but one additional condition. Whenever you wish, you can invoke normal chess rules, those that you understand, pawn movement, pretty much like in passing, whatever you feel like. If you do, however, you sustain one uh, 3d6 burn for calling on otherworldly knowledge. So my friend, at the start of every act, you each get to take one turn. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, and fuck. then you get your normal mechanics. <laughs> okay. So, start of the game. <clears throat> uh, Ace, you got a crit 20. You can move your pieces first. Okay. I will move uh, this one up one space. One space, okay. Yeah. Remember, they block line of sight, and if they attack into a space, they uh, fuck that person up. So yeah. that one moves up there. Uh, my my friend over here is going to uh, naturally move this one one space forwards. 
Uh, that's mm -hmm. that's just how it would be. Um, Ace, yeah. give me a uh, roll to die. Roll to and die. I will I... roll for chest 12. 21. <laughs> Oh, 21's not bad, actually. Uh, hold on. 21. Gotta initialize the setting. <laughs> Is it Ace Burn immune? Wink. <laughs> you understand. It's more narrative than anything else. <laughs> there we go. We're gonna go roll to do. Ooh, okay. So you do manage to dodge out of the way of this, as the giant chess piece happens, but he gets to choose which space he puts you in. I'm moving yeah, everybody yeah. to front, so, yeah, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. I move y'all to front. He moves up here. Uh, he's going to take you and uh, put you over here. <laughs> Remember right. this block's line of sight. Um, okay. Uh, start of the first act. Everybody roll tonight. God, this is my brain. Yeah, man. It's gonna. It's only gonna get worse. <laughs> chess. Okay. It's time like, to play chess. Like, it's 12. like this thing <laughs> of. It would be easier if it was all just normal chess for me. But yeah. no, it's just like, it's like only normal chess, like, once. And so... You can, just... Dude, you can just play it as normal chess? If you're willing to accept the cost to burn, Oh, is. no! <laughs> no! Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, GK is gonna go first. I'm about to make your life significantly worse. Uh, GK uh, holds out that same sword and is like, Okay, here we go. And he activates... Hall of Mirrors, compass style. You and all participants in this conflict are marked with a facing direction. At the start of an act, choose which direction you're currently facing in one of eight directions. When an adjacent creature you're facing takes the move action, you may attack them immediately for free. You cannot roll to do or roll to die versus characters that are directly behind you. So, I'm about to hand you a funky little arrow, my friend. And you choose what direction Ace is facing right now. Fuck. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Mario Party. Uh, 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 here we go. Represents Ace. Uh, north. Uh, north. Okay. Straight up. And obviously you can only attack people that are within line of sight, probably. You can. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> and basically, just for narrative's sake, the way that this is communicated is um, uh, the man is actively casting an illusion on the area, but you and your squad are mostly immune to it, so he's just minorly manipulating your perception. Uh, mm -hmm. Sigizer is going to face herself like this. You sh you can adjust your own arrow now, also. Okay. Um, say... <laughs> Sigizer watches you two just... No, he's gonna... He turns his fine ass around and does this. <laughs> As... You all lock in your respective positions. Uh, say it's just gonna point it this way. Uh, he gets first go, so he's going to... Move his way down. <clears throat> Golden Knight takes off sprinting. He faces up in this direction, and he's going to stab up at Say. Golden Knight like this. Say like this. Oh, uh, I forgot. The fr the frog has unwounded everything. Uh, Say is going to roll to die. She's gonna lock in the ultimate shield as your frog comes under attack. Uh, the GK stabs out with that blade and digs it into her side. It, he does not proc any special abilities, but he releases a jet of flame from his back, and you see actual picks and wires pull him back in this direction, and he... He is going to use Climbing Hook. Discharge Flame and Fire Climbing Hook, allowing you to move up to two times that turn if that movement is a straight line. So, so long as he's moving in straight lines, he can move multiple times. He places his back to the pawn in front of him and then just preps himself. Say, you see his, uh, you see his say, like, clutches one of her arms. She's like, I am going to fall back to safety. <laughs> Um, she is going to, he passes her the turn. She is going to run over here and just basically chill and prep her abilities. Uh, she passes, uh, she's like, Ace or Seagazer, who wishes to go next? Uh, Seagazer, you can go. Seagazer, like, uh, okay, let's see if I can boot him off of that. She's going to drop, roll to die. Nice. 
bad. Nice, 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 nice. <clears throat> She's gonna use Arc Inferno. Stabs the blade into the ground, fires it like a thruster. Speed, part of the attack, plus one for every space moved. Classic. She moves directly over here and pretty much needs to strike him on the way past. Roll to do complex, plus a bonus of four. She locks him down. Oh. She was supposed to lock in that red. That actually hits him real good as he... Gah! And uh, she is going to ignite to knock his ass back. Opening him up for you. He flies free of that area. Ace, you're up! Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, move up here. And with my arrow. Yeah. Uh, with your and, arrow. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to attack him. I'm going to use Ooh. my action to uh, fill this space with Astral Astral Sea. <laughs> you love to see it. Okay. We go like this. There and do go, these uh, chess pieces count, count as characters or not? Uh, they do, yes. Okay. Uh, and then I'll just have it like uh, the space right here. Okay. Nice. <laughs> I knew you'd get a kick out of this. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So, lovely. Um, uh, is that your go? Uh, yeah, that's my action. Okay. Uh, I, have, uh, uh, you... I have like yeah. eight, seven spaces or eight spaces of a uh, oh, four, season. three. There you go. So, yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, you lock up these spaces. The act ends, and it is there. It is. God. <laughs> it's your next go, Ace. You get to go first. I get to go first. Yeah. Oh, it's the first turn of the thing, so now it's the chess move thing? It's the chess move, exactly. Sorry, I should have clarified. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, move uh, this one up another space. That one up another space, okay. Yeah. It crosses in that direction, closing the distance. Uh, this dude, you know what he's going to do. He's aiming this at both of you guys. Uh, both of you give me rolls to die. Okay. That's a 20 versus... Oh my god! You guys are so in sync! Um, oh. Roll to die. This one. 14. Uh, what direction do you dodge? Or, no, uh, he gets to he, decide. He has to choose, yeah. He is bumping you both into the fuck zone. You're both going down uh, here into this space. Yeah. And now you choose what direction you face. <laughs> uh, I mean... I mean... <laughs> Touch tips. <laughs> Sigas are like squinting, like, what the fuck is going on in there? And <laughs> as you stare at you and the GK, who both simultaneously dodge out of the way with the same roll, simultaneously turn and stare at each other, you both lock into place. And it's a funny thing that happens. You start to feel something again, Ace. A vision dancing in front of your eyes. <clears throat> Sunset. Again. Your swords clash. As the sparks remind you of something that you never experienced. Finding hope out there in the wastes. That proved to be the real difficult thing. For the man who set out to try to make a difference in the world beyond fighting the end, he found safety in succor, in a distant temple meant to treat those dying of flame deprivation. This place became his lone beacon, a reason to keep on fighting, to not let the despair in. Even as his allies, one by one, drifted off in their own directions. He stuck by, firm, holding fast to a vision of a world that could still be saved. And yet, a certain other reality befell this place. To offer a simple report on what occurred, um, It was a sham, all of it. Heading out into the wastes and finding survivors. 
fucking tricked from top to bottom. We tried to find those who were dying from lack of flame to bring them someplace that they could get help, but it turns out the only help waiting for them was an early end at the hands of the court of death. The people we thought we were saving, I suppose by their standards, we still were, but I couldn't describe the sensation. Placing your entire heart in the hands of someone you'd hope wouldn't break it and then they shatter it over your knee. You hope, at the very least, that if somebody presents themselves as a professional, they can eat. Uh, they, are, they have your best interests in mind, but it just wasn't the way the world worked. I left the machinists to try to find something out here, and all I did was result. Uh, all I did resulted in the deaths of more innocents. It's a fucking joke. So <laughs> when the court of death offered, when they said. You've done such a good job helping us already. Want to come along? I... The sickest part of myself forced me to say yes. The vision fades. The fire with it. And you're back to it. Next act. <laughs> you be. Uh, you two, you two point at each other. Uh, hold on. Did you keep her? Uh, did you keep her go again? Uh, I'll keep. Lovely. Should I even lock in? Yeah. <laughs> I rolled, but I, I guess I, I can't remember locking <clears throat> in. But yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, these. <clears throat> so, uh, you. Who got the higher roll? You got a twenty, right? You uh, get to go by yeah. the skin of your teeth. You get the uh, you get control of the turn. Who goes first? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let uh I'll let, I'll let uh, GK go first. You're gonna let GK go first. Oh fuck! <laughs> I noticed your ass is to that patch of astral sea behind you. Kind of annoying. I can't exactly dive in that and stab you in the back. Yeah. <laughs> he uh he. Looks you up and down, and then you see him briefly considering something. He, uh... <laughs> Give me a roll to die. Okay, I roll to die. I roll to do. <gasps> oh my god! The man goes! Well, then I got you right where I want you. He, you realize, while the other pyromancers you fought have an abundance of skill, they have an abundance of planning, this man, all he has is this bag of dirty tricks. And he literally reaches into said bag, fumbles around for a second, and you see his fingers walk around something. And he pulls out a flashbang and throws it at his feet. And, uh, to reveal flashbang... <clears throat> Roll to do. Blinds all targets currently facing you for 1d3 acts. You beat it by one! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, tell me how you stop the attack from going through. Uh, what Ace just does is just like he throws yeah. the flashbang and what he just like scoops at it with his heel and knocks it back into the astral sea. It <laughs> burns away as GK looks at you shocked he doesn't move. Uh, if he moved, you take that attack of opportunity from you. If somebody you're facing moves away from you, they get to stab you once for free. So he remains just squared up like, Fucking damn it, and then he passes you the turn. Yeah, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place more Astral Sea Patches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place uh, two two in this space, so two where I oh. am, and then keep oh expanding on this patch over here. Oh my god, and then uh, what what direction? Uh, just up. Up. <laughs> two, four. There you go. I might have added one too many, but that's fine. Um, <clears throat> he, you, uh, you, you throw those down, and do you move? Do I move now? <laughs> I see. So we're both staying squared up then. Uh, Seagazer is going to. She rolls to die, and, uh, <clears throat> or she rolls to die, unlocks that, and that leaves her with, um, <clears throat> that's very funny. She's just gonna lock hers in, like, as 
She makes her way down. She uses yellow, nine guns ignition, a really good one for this case. And she makes her way behind him and she's like, ha ha, gotcha! As she roars around, swinging the blade up, she gets the auto success and uh, he's knocked 1d6 spaces into the air. He flips end over end and uh, she's gonna go, where do you want him? Where do you want to put him? Uh... God, that's the complicated question. Because yeah. like in reality, I don't really want him to go anywhere. So she'll pop him up in place. He, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. He is now up here. Mm -hmm. ah, hanging in the air. Okay. Uh, Say is going to summon her swords. She does so. I would mark her with green, but as we know, that one's cursed. Um, yeah. Say summons her swords and gets ready to throw you fangs if it comes down to it. The GK flips through the air. Uh, Say... Uh, it feels like she's prepping not for fighting the GK, but for something else. Mm -hmm. uh, she's setting you up for something later. Um, Say takes her go. Uh, Sigazer's gone. GK is gone. Start of the next act. You move your chess pieces. Okay, I move uh, the rook uh, as normal chess yes. piece move right here. Oh, uh, wh whereabouts? Uh, uh, the left rook over to... Left rook? Yeah. Over... Yeah, to <laughs> right <gasps> past... <gasps> Yeah. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah. It scoots past to say, lets out a squeak, it flies over her. Makes its way over there. Okay. Uh, he is going to do the classic uh, chest 12 move. Everyone knows it. Since he's flipping in the air up above you, moves the bishop in mm -hmm. uh, and is going to try to stomp you with it. Uh, give me a roll to die. Roll to die. Uh, roll, Jesus, Ace, you're rolling like a fucking god right now. Okay, roll to do. Yep. Oh my god, you beat it by one again. Uh, okay. It still gets to position you. It's going to boot you, uh, one space over here, and it stays here. Um, mm -hmm. it lands you in the Astral Sea. Um, and that's the first go. You and GK both roll to die. To de right. uh, determine who goes first. 17, damn. 19? Oh, Seagazer. <laughs> GK remains pointed at you, which uh, genuinely proves to be a fucking mistake as Seagazer leaps in the air and is going to take the uninterrupted back access to simply fly up and fucking boot him down for 3d6 extra damage. As she leaps, twists, flips in the air, and then... Bonk! She sends him flying down, and he actually lands on top of this chest piece here. Thunking against the uh, the heavy shapes, he remains locked in place, and another burst of flame goes out. Uh, Ace, your go. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, simply... Uh, huh. I'm going to uh, do the classic Big Bang. So, uh, oh, it's yes. uh, <laughs> roll to do. 25. Okay, uh, that will, that's a guaranteed hit. Oh, dude, he's rolling good too. He locks himself up and he feels like he could push it to get the success. He doesn't take it. He stops himself in that moment and actually slows his movement. Uh, and Ace, tell me how you got him. Uh, Ace is going to uh, quickly uh, just like pop up. Or no, he, what he's going to do is he's going to hit this chess piece to yeah. just kind of like, <laughs> fling uh, Golden Knight up this way. <laughs> he whoom, flies up in that direction as, uh, where do you put him? Where do I put him? Uh, wait, yeah. I, have to, I have to roll. You gotta uh, roll for your knockback. 1d6 plus 2, so that's, uh, 5. So, five. Just f 5 upwards. 5 upwards. You knock him exactly here. As he, yeah. boom, touches down. Uh, he slides across the ground, and I show off this gift. God, the rolls have been so good tonight. Love to see it. Uh, cracks in the armor. Creaking can be heard from within the blade. That sword at his side starts to flare and almost build energy. You see cracks running through it. Um, okay, that's Ace, that's Seagazer. Say, uh, Say is going to delay her action. It's gonna roll to do, okay. He can roll to die to counteract this. Start of the next act, chest turn. Ace, your go first. 
Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is... Uh, huh. Chest turn? All right. Yeah. Uh, simply, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, move this rook yeah. right here. Interesting. Okay, you move it right there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, his chest turn. He is going to... Uh, night move. This one on top of you again. Give me a roll to die. Yeah, roll to die. Uh, yep. Boop. 18. 18, okay. Chest 12. Give me a roll. 18, 18. Uh, roll again. Roll again. Uh, roll roll again. to die. 16. 14. 14. Okay. Boom. Lands over here. I move. Uh, I'm going to move you. It's got to be an adjacent space. It can only move diagonals. She's shoving your ass in the corner. <laughs> okay. He moves you over there. Okay, choose facing direction. Uh, up. He chooses down. You feel yourself looking at each other. See, gazer. So this is gonna choose down. Um, she, God, she's loving this backstabbing. Um, by the way, I want to reveal, uh, sigazer has been doing really good because of this specifically. If no attacks were made against you specifically that turn, take two actions instead of one. I've just been doubling her damage. She's been backstabbing this man so fucking hard because he his ass is fixated on you. And she's just rushing in and getting him. Um, So, <clears throat> he preps himself and he looks straight down. And again, you feel your eyes meet from across the battlefield. And again, you get that same same strange sensation. Roma, are you here? Yes. It was a combination of, I guess, my greatest shame and a moment of abject weakness that I decided to do what I did. He sits, thinking back on himself, thinking about what led him to this point. A mark of deep betrayal from not only the court of death, but at the same time, he shudders. The world burned behind him. He managed to survive, but he looks down. Is it worth it? A man walks up. Happy that, um, happy that you're joining us. Yeah. I'm sure there are a lot of complicated things running through your mind right now, but, um, at the very least, I'm happy that you're with us. It is rare that, um, actually an individual not only qualified, but, uh, a qualified individual is interested. Let's put it like that. Interested's a strong word. Oh, didn't see any alternative. I see. Well, um... Right, right. Uh, you... I'm... I'll be back. <laughs> Vinter slowly turns and walks away. Time passes. The big man struggling with his ability to communicate with this individual in front of him. Instead, sends in someone else who walks up and over the doorframe. Good evening. Uh, hey. Uh, this rather large young man, roughly about the same height, maybe a little bit shorter than Venter, walks into the room and he bows politely and he goes... It's nice to meet you. My name is Stefano, and I'm the butler of this derelict. I will be tending to your needs. How can I help you today? Uh... He struggles for exactly what word he wants to say. What would even be appropriate here? And he's like... You got food that isn't a cube? Oh, of course. Do you have any preferences? 
or uh, allergies that I need to be aware of? <laughs> Cube shaped. Uh, I choose. I don't really like it. <laughs> Ah, I see. Your preferences are not to be shaped like a cube? Yeah. Alright, do you have preferences between... perhaps fruits or vegetables? I know those were quite hard to come by in World 9, but... Uh, I guess I haven't tasted a banana before. I can get that for you. Would you like some tea as well? That... yeah, that sounds nice. He smiles. All right, I'll be back shortly. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Oh. The man hangs his head for a second. Yeah? I wanted to ask, how would you like me to refer to you? Yeah. Luke's good enough. There's a moment of thinking. All right, I will do my best to remember it. Mm. He... This a bow. He nods as... To describe exactly how that went? Huh. It was the strangest thing in the world. Vinter clearly wanted to apologize to me, but, um, didn't exactly know the right words to say, so instead he didn't really say anything. Over time, I came to understand, to some extent, I was there to be a backup if something happened to somebody more important to them. It's fine with me, to be honest. I just wanted to feel useful anywhere. But it gave me a long time to decide. A few worlds by the outside standards. Apparently, the flame in the derelict is siphoned through different protocols that Eternity's put in place that make years pass in an instant if you let them. It slows down when the world's active, but at any other time, it's like living life in fast forward. I had no idea that civilizations had risen and fallen during the time that I was in that room. He said he kept me there to let me consider my options. The largest amount of time possible. It was the least he could do. Uh, it was the least he could do for an honored guest. And... You feel that vision fade from you again as the GK resets himself. <sighs> Almost frustrated, he picks himself up a little bit more and is like, God, okay. Uh, time to keep dancing, I guess. Give me yeah. a roll to die. Time to decide who goes first. Ace. Yeah. Ace, you're so fucking locked in. Ace, you're the most locked in you've ever been. <laughs> right. So, uh, my turn? Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill uh, the last two spaces of this hmm. square right here. Lovely. Uh, and then fill uh, all of these squares right here. Nice, nice, nice. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's... Uh, that's my action, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply, uh, who, what do I do? Uh, I'm going to ignite. Yeah. Because, uh, and I'm going to keep doing Astral Sea stuff, so what I'm going to do is I'm <laughs> going to ignite. Uh, yeah. and then I'm going to fill all the squares of this one. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, like, two more right here, fuck it. Two more over there, just to, just to get a little quirky with it. Just to get a little quirky, because I have a little... A little quirky. corked up? Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's my turn. That's your go. Okay, uh, who do you pass it to? Sigis uh, or JK? Uh, I'm going to pass it to Say. Ooh, Say, okay. Uh, Say summons her swords, they float around you, and, um, she, uh, she's going to roll. Actually, three times. One, two, three. Okay, she needed all three. Uh, she will ignite to push that. Please say, do good. <laughs> okay. She beats a 20. Say's expression. You see her. 
What she be doing this entire time? You watch as her swords actually fly free from her body, and they move around the area. They float through the arena, and then you see her flash you a look that doesn't... Oh boy, this is upsetting. Say gives you a look from across the arena, and she nods to you. But the person that she's nodding to... It isn't you. You feel... You feel a sense of trust and responsibility to this person. And you almost feel a presence at your side nod back at her, communicating. And you gain the information. Over here... You see... Out of sight... A hidden segment of the arena... Where someone is simply sitting there watching, licking his wounds. It's on the far end, but he sits like a gladiator of an ancient civilization, watching you fight for his amusement. You realize GK doesn't exactly have a choice in this, the same as this other you never did. But now you know where he is. She passed the torch along. That's her go. <laughs> she passes it to Seagazer, who runs around, wheels her weapon, it's gonna do the same thing she's been doing this entire fight and just beaten. Uh, she will do the classic. This is Bandit Heroics. On a successful hit, the next source of damage is reduced by the damage uh, dealt by this ability. So she's gonna move over, stab him in the back, and just literally double up on it. Um, yeah, okay. She jams her sword into the GK's back, letting out a call of glee as seething flames activates. Motes of fire begin to fly free from the cracks running through the glass. The sword continues to gain power. Uh, the GK stumbling forwards. He takes the blow. Preps himself for a turn. Twists his body. Fires a burst of flame at the ground. Sending himself cascading through the skies. The grappling hook touches down at the head of this pawn as his body cartwheels directly towards you. It's funny. The sensation as you watch him move and the feeling you get from the man is shockingly liberated. As he flies through the sky, he also experiences freedom. Roll to die for me. He's coming straight at you. Four. Four! He moves through and slices, landing on the other side, both of you landing functionally back to back. He touches down, spinning the blade in his hand, and that will be... Okay, that's only going to be uh, 11 damage. Okay. Only 11. Or 12, sorry. Uh, he's just going to say, now out of line of sight... You've gotten yourself yeah. in kind of a mess, haven't you? <laughs> I have a bad habit of trusting the wrong people, it seems. Don't worry, I got something super cinematic whipped up. It'll be fine. <laughs> he, uh, back to back with you, he, uh, he sort of straightens himself up. Got something on my end. Let's hope if we throw absolutely everything we've got at him, one of us will catch him. Yeah. Sort of the next act. What yeah. direction are you facing? Uh, it's chest turn. <clears throat> oh, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Actually, uh, do me a favor. Tell me what direction you're facing first. I want to know if the thing I expect to happens happens. Oh, what? Just like the sudden turn? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> you both whip around on your heels and boom! Sword to sword, chest turn. Who goes where? Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, simply uh, activate this chess piece. Uh, and I'm going to have uh, the pawn uh, move diagonally through the Astral Sea. Uh, and stomp on this one. Oh, lovely. Okay, okay. So, um, oh, that's sick as hell. You're counting it as adjacency. Oh my god. Okay, okay. So it disappears into the Astral Sea, appears here. And then jumps and boom! Bounces down, obliterating this piece under it. 
he... Hmm. You hear him uh, call back as he... Moves his king a space forwards. Here. Into the Astral Sea. It erases this pawn. I erased the king by accident. You win, no. <laughs> it erases the pawn as it locks into place behind. You two staring at one another again. Swords interlocked. And then... That same vision starts to spread over you. <clears throat> Took me two entire worlds to decide to go back. Probably longer. Doesn't count all the time I spent dreaming. But I decided to give it my best shot. I love the world once. Why not try to do it again? Even if I get betrayed. It was probably worth the risk, right? After all, it'd be the greater act of cowardice if I simply sat and waited in my room for everything to end. Venter seemed to take the news pretty well. He said he was proud of me for finally making a decision at least. I don't know when I got so close to the guy, but he seemed genuine about it. It's not something I understand. How could he? The one I was actually concerned about, though. <clears throat> he sits on the far side of the table from you, Stefano. So, uh, good to, good to see you again. Oh, it's good to see you too. This is a strange thing to say to somebody you see every day. <laughs> yeah, um, <clears throat> I guess, uh, I'm just feeling a little nostalgic for when I first came here. Oh, I see. Do you, do you want a banana? Uh, no, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> I, uh, just, uh, you're not the person I expected you to be. There's a pause as Stefano uh, freezes, and he's like, did I, do, did I do something wrong? Uh, no, I mostly mean this in a good way. Ah, I see. Sorry, I just, uh, when it... When I came here first, you were like this prim and proper immaculate butler, right? And like, you haven't gotten any less that, I just realized there's other stuff happening to the side. Like all those stories you shared from, uh, your sister? Oh, with how the, the world's faring that... and stuff? Were they strange? I thought they seemed quite alright. Yeah, you seem to be really into nights and there's nothing wrong with that. He gets a little shy, because he's like, well, I mean, I was almost a knight. Really? Mm, it was... When I arrived, I sort of took a little while to decide what I wanted to be. And I ended up sort of being between with the... With the intended goal of my summoning, it's... My purpose is conducive in... Two Fields was sort of where I wound up. I was either thinking of becoming a knight and serving all the people here as a knight, or becoming a butler and serving all the people here as a butler. So, I assume you went with the butler option? I just thought they were cooler. <laughs> really? Cooler than knights? Cooler in a way you see less often. Hmm. Cooler in a way that you have to be every single day instead of Every once in a while, I suppose. Both have their merits. Uh, there's a lot of things that a knight could do that I can't because I chose to be a butler, but I think the daily payoff for everyone here is a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the case, without a doubt. I mean, ugh, fuck. Um, shit. I mean, uh, sorry about the cursing. Uh, I'm trying to do better about it. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of laughs. He's like, 
I can tell you're trying. <laughs> <laughs> that is somehow worse. <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted to say it's been nice getting to it's been nice getting to know you. You can't exactly bring it to his lips. The phrase of I'm leaving tomorrow. So instead, he shuts it up inside of himself and does his best to look at the glimmering World 12 out in front of him. A world that he will try to enjoy, unburdened by the past. It's been really nice. He's sort of a head tilt where he's... He doesn't totally understand where this is coming from, but he's like, yes, it has been nice. Are you feeling all right? Yeah, better than ever. Feels like my head's finally cleared out. I see. Do you, do you need me to bring you anything? Nah, I'm good. All right. Uh, I suppose I'll see you tomorrow then. <laughs> yeah. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Have a good night. Good night. He barely musters out. As the last figure that was truly familiar to him disappears into the distance. All that's left now, he exhales. He remembers that day back on the mountain, staring out at the wilderness in front of him. All that's left is to see what the world has to offer. You stare at each other dead in the face, and you both roll to die to decide who goes first. What are you locking in, Ace? That one? Okay. Yeah, blue. He manages to win out, and in this moment, he fires a hook directly at you and tries to drag you with. Give me a roll to die. Roll to die? All right. Yep. 15. 15. So You're again. directly even. No, oh, yeah. in this case, I'm going to let you decide what happens. The hook is traveling straight towards you. He is trying to get you with it. The question hmm. is why. He, th do you let it hit or not? You get the decision. Sure, fuck it. I'll let it hit. It attaches. You take 12 damage mm -hmm. as the man attaches himself to you <laughs> and ends his turn. <laughs> Your go. Yeah. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do with my turn is I'm going to first uh, glitch step. Lovely. <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glitch step uh, right over here. You and take over uh, there. GK with me. You take, yeah, he comes with. He, boom, flies over here. And you both touch down, uh, realizing that you are directly in front of Eternity. He will use that free attack on you. Give me a roll to die. Okay, uh, roll to die. Yep. 17. That cracked blade stabs forwards again. And, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, he, it like, it digs into you and you take another 12. Mm -hmm. Um, he oh, like, oh. <clears throat> he looks over at you and then like, you feel his eyes tracing off to the distance. He's keeping track of something on his end. <clears throat> what next, Ace? What next? That was, that was just a move. Ah, huh, God, I'm trying to think, because I don't really want to attack GK, but I need to yeah. make it look convincing. Can I roll yeah. to uh, have an epic duel right in front of Eternity? <sighs> yes. Right. Ace. This is just a roll to do just a... Oh, fuck. Ace, you are an actor. Ace, the person that duels him. Right now, jutting forwards, the blade stabbing at him. You manage to sword fight as... For a moment, the person that you become becomes the person that he is, and the two of you duel, putting on a grand show. I temporarily reinvoke your gift that allows you to act. Roll one d6 extra. Yep, <laughs> or so that's you <laughs> you engage in a sword duel, darting back and forwards. Eternity, none the wiser as <laughs> oh my god you're fucking goblin 
Uh, as Seagazer is going to, uh, look in this one. <laughs> Just knife GK in the back as she's been doing this entire time. Seagazer are appearing behind, lets out such a delighted expression, like, good job keeping him distracted, as she wheels her sword back and sweeps it through him, and he's like, your demonic arm is chattier than mine. <laughs> I mean, who would want to talk to you? <laughs> you notice, the blade is now glowing with multicolored light. It shakes vibrating in your hands he actually nods approvingly of this yeah. so he's going to prepare an action <clears throat> end of turn mm -hmm. it's chess time <laughs> yeah uh so uh very representatively of what's about to happen uh i go first obviously uh, yeah. I'm going to have the rock go through the Astral Sea. Uh, and yes. <laughs> okay. The rock alights. Moving downwards. And, as it does, it darts through the Astral Sea, skating along behind you. GK stares at you. You stare at him. It sweeps over into the space. Appears right here. Striking the king. And then what direction do you lock in? Uh, <laughs> I mean. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, <laughs> look at the arrow. Yeah. I'm going to lock in. You both turn on your heel along with Seagazer, whirling in place at this exact moment as you twist towards eternity. And time seems to freeze as the chessboard behind you locks in place. You want to confuse him? It Ace just yeah. looks at GK. You want to confuse him even more? Yeah. <laughs> So what Ace is going to do is he's going to brush GK's mask oh, like away to the side a little bit, dip GK down, and just kiss GK right in front of a turkey before teleporting behind him. <laughs> That's fucking good! What? Fucking go! As you just dip GK, kiss him on the face as Seagaz is like, haha, being cool with the bestie right now and then. <laughs> 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 you dip GK and vanish into a layer of light, disappearing as something unusual happens. The man in front of you watches with a stern expression observe everything observing everything that's happening and then his expression matches sea gazers <laughs> equivalently fucking shocked he lets out a roar as the two of you disappear through thin air and pop into existence in front of the man one sword fully charged uh well gk's sword cracks and bursts uh, he juts forwards and the sword with all of its stolen power unleashes the ability a lost beast he gains an HP shield he gold all the damage he's taken as the sword cracks and explodes finally adding all of that devastation to himself as a powerful shield wreathed in golden flames he darts forward and offers a punch his arm arcs upwards and strikes at Eternity's jaw. The attack. Boom! <laughs> the next with Eternity as he pops into the air. And Ace, you have a moment. You feel yourself duck down. Uh, you, you feel something manifest at your side. Say tosses you her sword. <laughs> Okay, so what Ace is going to do is he's going, he picks up the sword, he like tosses it in the air, right? And uh, he pulls something out of his pocket. Uh, <laughs> Hope's cultivation seed? 
And he's going to toss that in the air, too. And what he's going to do is kick Hope's Cultivation Seed into the back of Say's sword to have it explode (laughs) and launch the sword into eternity. Let's fucking go. Roll to do. I'm not risky. I'm using my auto succeed. I don't care. (laughs) You lock in your own functional power as the attack travels straight into eternity's gut. The sword locking there. He pull. Let's out a loud call as he flies backwards. He waves a hand as a wave of devastation flies at the two of you and you thunk, thunk, fly back to back against the wall, uh, facing him. He, enraged, sword lodged in his gut, opens his mouth. Ace, what order do you give the sword? <laughs> <laughs> what? Do, why don't you take a little break? <laughs> You tell him to take a break, and his body starts to seize up, and he's like, It's going to take more than that, as he tries to pull the sword out of himself, and GK's like, Okay, why don't I offer you a little help there, then? Seems like we had the same idea after all. The mask? Now that he's being held back by this invisible pressure that Eternity is uh, pressing on him, cracks and falls away, revealing the GK's true body. (laughs) It falls off. And the face there is... (laughs) Hey! (laughs) Twice's expression lights up with a beaming grin as Eternity... Temporarily, you see his face fall. What the fuck? And GK (laughs) snaps his fingers, revealing, right now, Eternity can only face one direction. And oh boy, this distraction was effective enough as the man behind him focuses his ESP on a single point. Not only surround, not only with a sword of authority buried in his chest, one man freezes the very fabric of time around a man who has no concept of it. It all comes crashing down as this look of stupefaction remains stuck on Eternity's face. Luke's expression lights up as he holds his hand out, keeping eternity locked there, sword in his gut. Twice, huh, touches down. Ah, oh, man. I think that works well enough for a ruse, hey guys? Yeah. And it, <laughs> Ace just kind of like walks up, like waves his hand in front of eternity. He's stuck like that. <laughs> I mean, that'll probably keep him still for a little bit. <laughs> he remains locked there as uh as it's just fucking it's a fucking empty expression twice as like <clears throat> I'm gonna kick him in the balls <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> she pauses she pauses pain might make him break out of it <sighs> she pauses uh, her leg don't okay. worry don't worry don't worry I Look, it's fine. You just gotta keep him distracted. And so Ace just like props up a phone with with Argos's stream on it. <laughs> Ooh, Argos's stream for the man. <clears throat> Luke is so focused in on this point. He's like, I appreciate this, everyone. I'm going to keep him as locked in place as I physically can. Hey, uh, Ace. Yeah. Would you mind retrieving Obsidian Gold from over there? Oh yeah, that like, would probably help you. Yeah. And something unusual happens as you move into the area. An almost holographic projection flares up from Obsidian Gold. Thanks for the coordination and the assist back there. Also, thanks for not kissing me and kissing her instead. Look, look, (laughs) it's fine. Look, if you wanted... Yeah, yeah, okay, never mind. Oh, hold on, it cut out for a second, sorry about that. (laughs) uh, Ace was like, I mean, if you wanted, but... (laughs) <laughs> you bring obsidian gold over and you place it on uh you place it pretty much on Lug 
okay, this should feed me a nice flame supply so I won't um, have a seizure and die. Uh, the GK like looks over. Genuinely. Pleasure working with you. That little facade was actually, uh... Twice is like, yeah, that was Armor Boy's idea. How do you... Didn't realize there were two lugs kicking around. That's interesting. How'd, um, you fit... How'd you fit twice in that armor? I had to stretch real bad. <laughs> 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 Listen, I... I'm gonna be honest. I liked your flame plenty as an individual, but, uh... Working with the flesh and blood body... He looks over at his flesh and blood body. I think I might actually... Huh. I think I got the raw deal here. Luke, how fucking dare you say that while I'm petrifying a literal tormented? <laughs> you lock the mask on the man. <sighs> okay. Back fucking together as one. All right. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> you keep, uh, he's like, this is going to keep feeding me flame. You've got somewhere mm. you need to be, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. This is kind of fun, but I guess, like, there's, like, the whole, like, queen stuff with all the other things. Uh, like, huh. And even then, I don't think Eternity is even the biggest threat here. Really? But, yeah, there might be the god of humanity knocking himself around somewhere. I don't know, but just just keep be careful. Just okay. because we got him locked down doesn't mean that there's not threats around. I'll oh yeah, do my best. Oh yes. yeah. Also, I uh, just like uh, he pulls out a wine bottle, uh, like places <laughs> on the floor. He's like for you guys. If you oh, want. Thank fucking god! <laughs> right? Finally, some good news. Uh, beyond the kiss, actually. <laughs> <laughs> blows you a kiss back yeah uh, yeah why are you doing this directly in front of me I need to literally remain staring at the man <laughs> I mean it's kind of funny yeah no you can't move <laughs> she starts poking him in the cheeks look, <sighs> look it's fine it's uh also nice to actually be working on the same side for once but you know uh, doesn't make you less annoying, and I'm not talking about you, Luke. I'm talking about the Golden Boy, okay? <laughs> I'm glad that you put a distinction between the two of us. It... They weren't... He wasn't his own person the entire time, you know? There was a certain point at which he interacted with you enough that we sort of branched. We split off one from each other, and I think that is in due to no small part yours and a certain other someone's efforts. So is your fault, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> the the uh, the persona that like swims through this armor looks back over and he's like, <clears throat> "How long till we see your other again?" Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. All right, yeah, wink. <laughs> <laughs> Like, looks at eternity. <laughs> you, mm. he is stuck there, staring straight ahead at Argos's stream. <laughs> okay. So, I assume we could never, you know, convince you otherwise that, like, you know, everything's bad. Now you should probably stop what you're doing. Probably not. Yeah, you can't respond, really. <laughs> Dead empty expression. <laughs> look, just watch the stream. Look at Willow Wisp. Look at all those people out there fighting, and just realize something, buddy. No matter how dark things get, that's when the light's gonna shine its brightest, and you're gonna realize one day that life is indeed beautiful. <laughs> all right, good luck babysitting. I'm off to the throne. I'm gonna kick him in the balls the second he wakes up. <laughs> uh, just make sure to run as fast as you can afterwards. Oh, trust me, I'm not gonna miss this for the fucking world. <laughs> Twice is like, Twice walks her way back over. She starts doing fucking stretches. <laughs> She's like, oh, I got a, like a twist on it. <laughs> you walk your way away as 
one last memory, flame to flame, does drift its way over. <clears throat> you see. <laughs> one last vision. <clears throat> this time, first from the Golden Knight's perspective. A persona of pragmatism. Built to make what Lug was doing that much easier. It speaks up, conveying the events very bluntly. I did my best to love the world. I tried my hardest, but when it ultimately comes down to this, I need to accept another reality. Either I didn't try hard enough, or I'm just not cut out for something like this. I thought I found meaning, but... I found my same family again. This time... They took more of my brother than I was willing to part with. It was a confusing thing deciding to go back to the demons. Couldn't decide if I was betraying them, betraying Opie, or betraying both. All I knew is at the very least, if I kept my eyes on them, maybe, just maybe, I'd have a chance to see something play out different. Fucking sick of the same old cycles. Again and again and again. I don't want to love the world. I want to... just want to... A man drives his ambulance to the edge of the coda. Rivulets of neon light dancing across that windshield. He pulls up to the edge and looks over, yawning abyss down below. No matter how much effort he put in, no matter how much he tried, this world was always just a little bit too brilliant for him. He holds his hands back, looks up at the ceiling, and quietly drives off back to a place that to him is a little more familiar. And that long sunset carries on and on and on. Eventually, to a different land. Stained, bleached orange by the sand and the dunes. You leaped over those hills once. And again. Today. You leap over those hills again. Crunch! A great impact disturbs the, uh, the front of the cliff face. With a great shudder, a massive shape <sighs> lifts itself off again and drives itself further into the wasteland on the orders of a one riddle arendite in a sea somewhere else. In a place known only to you. Ace, you wake up. And that is the end of the session, baby! <laughs> Let's go! Let's fucking go! Oh, that was so Let's fucking go. Go. Oh. All right, Give me a second. Holy shit. Squad, good fucking okay. session, <laughs> squad. By the way, stream, stream, was the audio good at the end there? Was the audio good? Because my 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 Scarlet fucked out, so that was the most robotic <laughs> oh, shit no. at the end. So, but I didn't want to unplug it so that the stream audio would be fine. <laughs> but I, okay, it was fine. It was okay, good, cool. It was good. It was good. Okay, thank God. It was funny. It was thank great. God. Laughter yeah. kept his fucking word, guys. 
Guys, I shake you. Cry. Good fucking session, squad. Great fucking session, that everyone. Holy shit. Right, let me... Holy shit. Oh, fucking Maybe God. Maybe one day you'll figure out that life is beautiful. <laughs> life <laughs> is beautiful. <laughs> funny at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I, I'm so sorry, chat, but that was the funniest fucking thing I've ever done in my life. Because <laughs> the thing that Jay fucking yeah. DM'd me was yeah. the fact that it that it was twice under there. It was twice, <laughs> so it was was twice like, from minute zero. <laughs> and so oh, I was just like man. thinking, and I was just like, God, this is the funniest thing I can do, and people will hate me for it, but I'm going it was, to. It was literally a large figure that looms over him. Yeah. And then, and then it t twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aloha queer baiting into the best line of show is fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. It's an art form. I, but we have fucking life's, fan art. Life's beautiful, bros. <laughs> <laughs> life's beautiful. Uh, it was like, uh, life is beautiful. Uh, first off, from Don, we have, fuck yeah. Man. Let's uh, go! Ooh, That's ooh, fucking yeah. great. Fuck oh, yes. Yeah. Nice. Uh, then we have uh, from Dungeon Wrestling oh, right, the post nice. from the last session. Cool. Yeah. Oh, fucking like hell the film yeah. At the bottom. And then we have all the dills. Dills! Oh, yeah! Good job, uh, uh, my creepy that shit going. Hold damn. Business <laughs> 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 oh, development, sales, and marketing. I'm watching the stream, by the way. I am throwing bits <laughs> and stuff. Read my super chat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's oh break my into my, my old job <laughs> together. Oh, job. <laughs> <laughs> we got a Stefano. Oh, oh, holy cool. fuck. Then we have... <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Nice. Lovely. Yeah! Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. yeah! Fucking killer. The saucy Argos. And then, <laughs> Don't care. Oh my god. So, <laughs> Jay sends me these yeah. fucking werewolves. Jay sends images. these werewolves fucking <laughs> constantly. Dude, this, this is the GK. This I mean, is you don't understand. Luke. This is what Purple Luke is. The GK is the werewolf man in these images. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see those fucking werewolf images, I take so much psychic <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I Poly love it when you get ditched in the polyhedron. Oh. Willow! Wilbert. Wilbert was. The strongest woman! Yeah. <laughs> She's the strongest woman. <laughs> then, uh, BHM with <laughs> public waste what? removal. Isn't that what they did to Ace? The port A little yeah. bit. <laughs> 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 Theo's Wendy. angry. Oh. <laughs> Hey, You're not upset at her. <laughs> I just got a new arm. I wanted to break my arm on eternity, not you. <laughs> Hi, Eagle. Hi, Eagle. Oh, Hi. oh my god. Oh, she's oh, fucked up. Oh, I love that. Oh, she's so no. upset. Scrolling past that, because, yeah, at least Kage will know no jutsu. Yeah. Oh my god. And then Dungeon Master Zero. Yeah, sick. Oh, that's fun. Shit, I'll do my recipe to finish Aww. the poster. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Get yeah, well soon. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh. God. Oh, God. Alright, big old friend. Fun, fun, FNAF. Last time you hit me with a fish. Things are reminding me. I almost forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, don't see it, chat. I, I, I don't see it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you understand yeah. my vision. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Uh, life is beautiful. <laughs> life is so beautiful. <laughs> the plants. The plants. Yes, this is exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> life is beautiful. Oh Argus sees chapel. What the derelict sees. Uh, <laughs> oh. Nah, I'd win. Nah, I'd win. <laughs> yeah. I get it. There it is. Oh, like, sick as hell. Life is yeah. indeed beautiful. There we go. Don't you oh, raise your poster? Yeah. Look at them. She does not want to say that. You would have hit so much of this. Holy crap. Ah! 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 God, that is awesome sauce. <laughs> what the fuck? Let's me. Oh, let's me. <laughs> Suffering builds character, life is beautiful. Suffering builds character, life is beautiful. Suffering builds character, life is 
<laughs> Girl, watch out. You kind of sound like you're flirting when, we, when you're flirting when we argue. Bro, I'm serious. <laughs> you're making our Steve Riley look gay. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Uh, Let's go. Oh my god. Oh my god. It was a fucking sham, man. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh. Yeah! Dude, holy oh. shit. Very nice. God damn. <laughs> purple is scam. Oh, oh, thank, thank fucking oh, God, sick. someone understands my vision. <laughs> Yowie. <laughs> oh, they got posted last minute. No, Unironically, oh. you kissing twice on the face shocked eternity so much. I do. Yeah. I, I see that fucking icon and I think it's kind of cute. In my mind, it's the part of him that sees two people kiss and, and freaks the fuck out because he's a little fucking prude. <laughs> yeah? God. <laughs> yeah. I. Holy shit. Thank you all. That's how you defeat him. For coming out. Thank you, Jay, for running. Thank everyone yeah. for playing. Thank you all for drawing fan art. And just remember... Life's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs>